month is Stephanie Nichol. Stephanie thinks she's here for some other reason. Stephanie has is the person who uh, is now the supervisor of the customer service. She has done an astounding job, but she's been here almost a little bit over um, I think it's about five years now, and um, she started out in CSR, and she said she cried many days when she she started here, um, but she has become strong and uh, leads the team well. She works for you. She brings me problems that um, are seem like they won't be solvable, but she finds a way to make it work. She is working for the citizens to make sure you have the best possible service. I've seen those changes in the utility utility department. Uh, she has just taken on a very good leadership role and the girls are following her. And I am so proud um, that she is now supervisor of that department and doing a fantastic job. So uh, Stephanie, I say congratulations for being employee of the month. I do have several several things in terms of the city manager report that I want to bring to your attention. Um, last meeting, we did say we were going to put on the agenda about the food trucks that did not make it to this agenda. So I wanted to, to be transparent and say that we were still working out a couple of details, listening to your concerns, the board's concern, and going back and working that. And so, uh, Mayor, if, we'll, if I can have a motion to have that on the next agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second that we place the food truck uh, question back on the uh, agenda for the next meeting. Um, is there any discussion or questions from the board? Any from the public? Uh, Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So we will have that on the agenda uh, for um, the end of January. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. So a couple other things, and a lot of things are going on. We haven't met in a while, and I wanted to bring you up today, um, particularly on the city's finances, where we are in uh, the reimbursement process and uh, what we're going to be receiving in the next couple of weeks. We're pretty excited about um, the, the ditch, the, uh, di uh, the waterways program. We are going to be having a reimbursement there. We have submitted. We spent over $4.1 million. We'll get a about 3.7 million back. We had to send in some uh, um, other documentation and that number actually went up a little bit. So that's the NRCS program where we're cleaning the waterways and the ditches. We are in reimbursed at 75%. And so we will be seeing that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we are working on the community develop, uh, community disaster loan. That loan, uh, we've been working on that a while, is actually a grant. Uh, we got word last week that we will probably qualify for $5 million, uh, and we're pretty excited about that. That's been a long time coming. Uh, we've been working with the state on our uh, $8 million reimbursement. Had some good news. We've been working with the auditing firm there who is working hard to validate all of those invoices. Uh, we anticipate that there's going to be a reimbursement there of either $3.1 million or we may um, they may hold off and just send it all at one time, which, which is a little bit over $7.2 million. You see where I'm going here. The city is moving forward. The city is doing great things. And the city's finances are moving ahead. Uh, we have a couple of projects that are going to be moving forward in the next couple of months. We have the $1 million transportation paving um, that was appropriated by our legislator. Uh, we have the $1.2 million half cent sales stack paving that's getting ready to get started. And um, there are just a couple other things that I feel that the public needs to know. It was said that we are business as usual. We're not business as usual. We are about the city and we are about being transparent um, and doing the very best for the city. Uh, I visited a lot of residents' homes in the past couple of uh, weeks uh, talking about some stormwater issues and uh, we worked out some of those issues. Uh, we have also 
I had a leadership team strategic planning meeting, and uh, that was an all-day event last week. It was absolutely phenomenal. We came up with a mission statement. We are going to have a strategic planning session with our board on January 30th. We're going to take our strategic planning, the things that we've done, um, come up with whatever the board comes up with in strategic planning, merge those two documents together, and we're going to have a plan for the next five to seven years. A city has to know where they're going. We just cannot throw spaghetti on the wall and think we're going to get there. That is not the way um, that I feel like that the city should go forward. So I think um, with your input, with the board's input, and also the, the department heads, I think that we are on the right road to get there. This strategic plan will be available to you. I've asked the IT person to develop a landing page, a page that's specifically for the strategic planning of the city. It is a living, it will be a living document, um, but it will have a roadmap of how we will rebuild, what we will need in the future, and how we will get there. We have written a mission statement. We have not presented that to our board, and uh, hopefully they will like it and approve it. Uh, just a couple of rebuild updates. The Garden Center, uh, uh, the Garden Club, if you've not seen it, it's absolutely beautiful. We have a couple of more weeks on it. Mayor, I'd like to propose that we uh, have the opening of the Garden Club on February 17th uh, at 10 a.m., and then um, after that, we will have a health fair on February 19th that will be open to not only the employees, but it will also be open to the residents. Uh, that's going to be an exciting time. We're about 90% finished with the service center. And then though, after those projects are finished, we will turn our attention to the senior center, um, giving it full attention because it is a little bit more detail. Uh, and Joe and his guys have done a phenomenal job. And let me just tell you, this work that's being done now has been done, it's been done internally. So we have saved the city a lot of money in terms of doing that and, and just buying the materials to do it. Um, the 17th Street uh, light is up, 17th Street in 77. Thank you, Mr. Miller, for kept, he kept pushing us. And I uh, will thank the county for making it happen and ha making it happen quickly. And thank Bobby for coming up with that idea to, to work with the county to make that um, happen. Thank you, uh, uh, Commissioner Aldrich, for Law Enforcement Day uh, that we went throughout the schools and, and uh, told the SRO officers, uh, Commissioner Russell went with them, a couple of them, that we appreciate them. So that was really a really good day. The fencing RFP is out, and uh, we'll just wait to get bids back from that. Um, and yes, the permitting and building department is getting better. It's taken a while. We put staff in place. We are expediting um, those permits. And just let me give you a kind of a, a gauge of what they're having to deal with. So I, I want to make sure I get these numbers right. In um, 2017, they sold about 1,800 permits. Last year, after the storm, 4,022 permits. 2019, end of 2019, 6,221 permits. And remember, last year, they were working with half of the people they have now. I think they've done an outstanding job, and we will continue to move forward now that they have people in place, now that we have processes in place. So thank you, Mayor, for this time to give a good update to the Absolutely. city. Absolutely. Thank you for a great update um, for everyone. Um, moving on to item number six, that is the city attorney's report. Mr. Albritton? No report at this time, Mayor. Thank you. Item number seven is our public commentary. If you're not familiar with how our meetings work, um, public commentary is your opportunity to come uh, forward and to address the commission. Uh, we ask that you try to limit your comments to three minutes unless you need some extra time, and you can let us know if you do, if it's something special. And um, also throughout the meeting on each item as we're discussing it, you will also have opportunities for public commentary as we progress through the meeting. So if there's anyone who would like to address the, the commission at this time, please step forward. Go ahead, Mrs. Walker. And if you would, please adjust the microphone as you speak so that it can go on out. We're, we're a live meeting on Facebook for all of our other people who are not here. So, Janet Walker, 1106 Michigan Avenue. Recently, I read in the Lynn Haven Ledger, which is a wonderful piece of uh, newspaper for the city, 
And it, there was a article by Commissioner Tinder in the newspaper I have here with me. And it was regarding one of the city's department directors. That's what the person was called. And this particular person, right after the storm, purchased $500 worth of personal clothing on the city's credit card. And according to Ms. Tinder's article here, Ms. Tinder asked why she did that. And it says the person purchased $500 worth of clothing for their personal use and charged it to the city's credit card. This, to me, is outrageous use of the city's money. Then, on top of that, Ms. Tinder asked the employee's supervisor, did that employee pay back that $500? And the supervisor said she did not know. Then the supervisor said, well, maybe Mr. White, our former city manager, gave it to the employee as a gift. This is not a good sign for the supervisor. She did not know what was happening in her own area. If Mr. White did do this, it is extremely wrong, as we all can imagine. Um, but does, that does not give the employee and the supervisor an out. There, she, there should be some common sense available in the heads of these two people. They should know that the cities, the citizens of Lynn Haven are not paying their taxes in order for employees to put personal items on the city's credit card. I would also like to know approximately how many people in the city have the availability of using the city's credit card. And if they do, I would like an outline of how the card is rectified once it comes back to the city for payment. Does the citizen, the employee, attach receipts to the uh, credit card statement? Who approves the payment of the credit card statement? Where in the budget of each department is it outlined how much is spent on these miscellaneous credit card statements? And what description is put on that light, line item that, so that I can go to the budget, take out that line item from each department, and find out how much is being spent? Finally, I would like to know, oh, I asked you all that already, how many people have these credit cards? I would appreciate all that information. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Walker, for your comments. Um, first of all, I would not even pretend to um, try to say what Mr. White did or did not do. As you know, there's an ongoing investigation. Um, I have knowledge of the article that Mrs. Tinder wrote. I have spoken with the city manager as the mayor, you know, my concerns, and um, she's, you know, told me her concerns. I'll let her address or anyone else from the commission who would like to. Um, also, credit cards I know are given to various officials in the city depending upon their need to have them. I will tell you the mayor does not have one. He's never had one. Um, this has been um, a very difficult time, as uh, Commissioner Aldridge alluded to. There are so many legalities involved, so many things um, that I would love to stand on the top of this table and shout at the top of my voice on behalf of just myself because of some of the accusations which have come to me, but at this time that's impossible for me to do. But there will come a day. And also there are many others in the city who have had to suffer the same sort of silence, not being able to speak, not being able to defend because of the fact there is an ongoing investigation. So please, as residents of the city, at this point in time, I think you all know this mayor, you've known me a long time, and I don't think you've ever known me to be silent about anything. But right now I have to be. And so, no, it's not business as usual. I, I took a little, trying to work together, but I took a little offense at that. Lynn Haven has not been business as usual since I became the mayor in 2015. I've worked very hard to move this city forward. And um, the article, I have great respect for Commissioner Tinder. I have great respect for everyone on this board. But for me to, as the mayor speaking for the board or for the city manager to try and answer there, I counted as you were asking, I believe you asked me 34 questions just then. Um, I would invite you to come in and meet with the city manager and let her answer those questions for you. Who has credit cards, how the limitations are, what the budget limitations are, as I would extend that same invitation to anyone here in the audience. Maybe it would be a good thing for us to 
put together a document that outlines that so that everyone has that same transparency, that same um, answer that Mrs. Walker has asked for, because I'm sure um, that like she um, and Mrs. Walker, with great respect, the questions that you ask, um, you know, the article did lead to a lot of questions. I mean, they do for everyone. And there are many more questions to be answered before all of this is ever solved and resolved for the city of Lynn Haven. Unfortunately, it's a painful process for everyone. So, you know, Commissioner Aldridge was um, saying he was sorry to the residents earlier. He was not a commissioner during the storm. He was not a commissioner when the ugliness took place. And those of us who have been here through the ugliness and have worked through it and have stood tall and have tried to represent this city the best that we can in the midst of a storm after the storm, um, I make no apologies for being a strong leader. I brought this city through one of the most difficult times, if not the most difficult time in its history. And like I said in the beginning, I am still standing. I will continue to stand for this city. I will continue to stand for what is right. And I've had several people come to the microphone over the past few weeks that I've never seen before and ask questions knowing that I could not answer them publicly. And I felt a little belittled by it. No more. Mayor Anderson is back. I am standing tall and I will not take responsibility for things I did not do. If there's anyone else on the commission who would like to speak at this time, please feel free to do that. Thank you. Mayor, please go ahead. I'm going to respond to some of those and then um, our legal attorney can say whether or not, you know, hey, Vicki, you just need to, to hush or what. what and you didn't tell me to be quiet either, so, so I just so, kept on. So, so I, I just want to address some of those this, because some of that is very inaccurate. First of all, um, let me make it perfectly clear. I was not the city manager in 2018. I was not the supervisor of any director in 2018. I was, the, I was the city manager appointed in 2019, March. Secondly, that particular employee came to the city the day after Hurricane Michael and wanted to offer their services and did not have clothes on the, her back. And the former city manager offered that. It was not $500. It was $125. The rest of that money was used, my understanding, and going back and looking at the receipts, was used for supplies for people who came to work for the city to make sure the city was running properly. There were employees, including myself, that did not have clothes, that did not have socks, did not have underwear did not have soap and we came to work for this city i love this city i will never take a dime from this city i will give more than i put out and i want you to know that i will never do anything to embarrass you under any circumstances in terms of the credit card Every department head has a credit card that was in place before the former city manager left. Those credit cards are used under their budget line. If there's something then that is needed in supplies, it cannot, it, they, they're out and they need it right then and there. They buy it, they write a PO, and that is accounted for. So a, P, a purchase follows, a P, um, the PO follows that purchase. So you can go back and see what people spent. I think that we need to move forward. If we continue on this past, path of the past, we are going to be destructive to ourselves. And I, am, I don't know about you, but I am ready to move forward and I'm ready to do great things for this city. I will be as transparent as you allow me to be and I, I would all due respect for Commissioner Tinder. I love her. I love every single one of you, but we cannot continue to tear each other apart. We must move forward. Thank you so very much. Mayor? Yes, May please. I say something? Please go ahead. Okay. Um, I agree with moving forward, but I also agree with the fact that I believe our status quo that has been and things that have been accepted can no longer be accepted. Absolutely agree. Okay. 
We agree with that. I saw the same receipts you're speaking of. There were genes on the one receipt that had deodorant and such and things of that nature. There were also receipts um, for buying lunch and things of that nature. I don't have a problem with that. We had employees that had nowhere to go, that, you know, were living out of whatever. I know some that lived out of their homes with no power, no running water. And I know a lot of others that were put up in hotels for quite some time. That I cannot hardly tolerate the fact that half truths come out. We word things in a way that you can twist them any way you want. Um, but I will say that until I feel or until that we see that when residents don't stop coming to me and say, I don't feel like we're getting the whole truth. I feel like we're only told what they want us to know. They make it sound like we're some kind of horrible place. And I hate that because I love Lynn Haven. I love serving on this board. But people have got to feel like we're being transparent. And obviously they're not. They're not feeling that way. And you know what else was in that article? Mrs. Walker was gracious enough not to bring that up because that was, I'm going to very frivolously say, uh, right after the storm, that's how everybody deals with things. Um, but I really, um, I have to speak the truth. And no matter how we spin it, I'm going to always speak the truth. So I would like to say, oh, let's just forgive and forget. But like Commissioner Aldridge said, that's $5 million of taxpayers' money we're not getting back. And every time we spend money here, that's taxpayers' money. And we spend it like we've got it. We spend it like we just, the, there's no bottom to the barrel. And so when I bring those things up, it's because they've been brought to me by residents. And they would like to see us become a little more frugal. Commissioner Tender. If I yes, go ahead. Excuse me, I'm not, I'm not sure Commissioner Tender was finished. Were you finished, Commissioner? Yeah, I'll be done now. Commissioner Aldridge? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with city manager saying, I, you know, the processes to your concerns are being reviewed. They are being changed. There are differences taking place, and it's because of those grievances from the previous administration. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they, you know, what I mean, we can't keep looking at, at something that happened in the past and then say, well, I'm stuck here. Well, we're not stuck there. We're going to correct the issues that were made and, and we're going to move forward. Um, I, you know, I, I don't fault you for trying to, to be a good steward of the people's money. I don't fault mm -hmm. you for that at all. I just think that, you know, again, like like Miss Vicky said, I, we could always five years from now look back five years and say, well, this is what happened five years ago. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't change what happened five years ago. All that we can change is what happens going forward. And I think we're all in agreement and on board with that mm -hmm. with that mindset. And I would love that. And, and Mayor, just one last thing that I forgot to put in my okay. report. Okay. Um, one of the things that I will do in the interest of uh, transparency, and I, it is actually written here, is every month we will do a lunch and learn breakfast with the boss, however you want to do it with the city manager where you can ask me anything you like, um, any question you like, and I'll be more than happy to give you that information. So we will have those once a month, and um, I will be putting that out so that we can have conversations. You can talk to me, and I will let you know in advance what those what we want to talk about so I'll have some information to be able to give you. So um, let's prepare to do lunch and learn, breakfast with the boss, uh, city manager night. I don't care what we call it as long as we get together and we move forward. Mayor. I, I think that's a, a great idea, um, Ms. Gaynor. Uh, Commissioner Russell, did you have something to add? I'm sorry. Yes, yes ma'am, Mayor, thank you. Um, this all going forward and us talking, I, I have an issue with commissioners posting stuff on social media without verifying the answers are correct. I mean, we're hearing $500, we're hearing $125. When the misinformation goes out, it causes problems. Another commissioner recently posted that the city of Lynnhaven, we passed an ordinance allowing food trucks. That has not happened. And it's caused work for the city because they've gotten phone calls from people wanting permits for food trucks. So I think it is exceptionally important that every commissioner makes sure what they put on social media is correct or quit posting. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you're very welcome. Um, unfortunately, um, social media 
frequently from anyone, not just commissioners, has information that's not correct and sometimes inflammatory. And it, it's we're still in a First Amendment country where we can say what we like. So, but you know, hopefully everyone will be responsible with social media. Is there anything else on this comment before we move forward? And um, I, I did have one final comment that I would say is just because everything that has happened over the past year and a half is not being discussed at commission meetings, please do not um, take into your account that it's not being addressed. The city is still under a very heavy investigation with everyone sitting at the table here and many of the employees still um, answering questions and still trying to get to the bottom of everything. So just because it's not being discussed out loud at a commission meeting, please don't assume that something's been swept under the rug or that it's never going to, to come out. So that's all I would have to say. Are there other comments? Uh, Mr. Walker? No, it is not. We've only had one person to speak so far. We're not moving along very, very, very well, but um, I think that it's a productive meeting when people can speak their hearts and minds, so continue. Uh, Rich Walker, 1106 Michigan Avenue. Did it fall? Uh, it fell. Can, uh, someone I else? came up, so it fell. <laughs> Good afternoon and Happy New Year. Happy New and Year, Mr. Walker. Walker. Uh, it's very difficult to follow what you were saying there because um, I understand where you're coming from but there's one thing that has to be said we cannot cannot forget the past the past governs how we're going to be in the future if we made a mistake we have to correct it and there are mistakes whether you were here or not we were here and it affected us I've had 17 years of persecution from a dictator city manager and I didn't like it we fought against it I didn't want him to pass away but that's one elected official said to me the only way you're going to get rid of him however I don't want that to happen but remember this what happens in the past governs the future absolutely and you have problems and your basic problem and this is the one that I've been fighting for is your charter your charter is what is giving you a problem. And it's giving you a problem because I'll tell you just one incident. It tells you you cannot have a mayor that is a lady. That's dumb. I haven't read that part, but go ahead, Mr. Oh, Walker. yes, it says. It says only he. I need you to send that to me. Well, the Bible <laughs> says he charter. too, but I'm assuming it refers to all of us. Well, so. that's, that's a belief. The Bible is a belief. Go ahead. Like, go ahead. Continue, so, Mr. Walker. What you have to do is, and what I have here written, is you have to look at your charter. Your charter was written in the 1950s. It was good for the 1950s. We were a family then. We all lived together. We all suffered together. We're back again as a family. We have to live together and suffer. That charter is out of date, way out of date. Should be brought up to take care of the city and the way it's going to go, the way you want it to go, where it's got to go, where it has to go. And can only be changed by referendum. That's correct. It has to be done by referendum. For example, your raises. In the charter, it raises. The only way it reads, the only way you can get a raise, the commissioners, is by referendum. You didn't do it. You never did it. I need you to send me some of the quotes from the charter that you're telling me because I don't read some of that. But yeah, thank okay. you for your, I appreciate right. your information. Anything else, Mr. Walker? But this is what has to be done. And what you're doing when you enter into hiring your city manager has to be taken into very consideration, which you're going to be bringing up when you discuss the, the uh, hiring. This is it in basic concept. You should sit together and Take a look at that charter, because that's what tells you what to do. That's the people. Remember this. The president had on his desk once, the buck stops here. The buck does not stop there. It stops in my pocketbook and comes from the taxpayer. I think we've forgotten that. We are, you, should, you should be responsible. And yes, we've lost $5 million, and you're possibly going to lose 70 you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. I'm sorry about the investigations, and we cannot hide behind that. 
We can't be telling the public that we're under investigation. Therefore, I can't tell you anything. We should be as Mr. Walker, I've never said that, and I will not be castigated that way. I'm sorry. I've never said that. I've never said that. Well, you just said we're under investigation. Yes, I did, and I said there are certain things that we cannot answer in public. I understand that, but you should do the best you possible because there's a lot of... Thank you, Mr. You're Walker. You're right. There's a lot of disinformation out there. And some of the public that's asked me things about investigations, there's total disinformation. Thank out. you, Mr. Walker. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Hi. Go ahead. Good afternoon, um, Mayor, Good afternoon. Manager, Good. Commissioners. Happy New Year to you all. Thank you very much. My name is Bridget Rogers. Uh, I didn't know I'm new to Lynn Haven, not new to uh, Panama City. In itself, but thank you very much. Um, I just, because of information, uh, sometimes a little information is dangerous. So I figured I'd come here. Um, I am the new property located on 17th Street called Parkview Townhouses. It is 50 townhouses. They are three bedrooms, two and a half baths, and D.R. Horton built them to rent. Um, it is, uh, we have three bedrooms, we have a attached garage, we will, we have state-of-the-art appliances, granite countertops, stainless steel, uh, you, you can go online. This is not a marketing thing. You'd be surprised how people have come to the community. Who are you and what the hell are you doing here? And so I felt the need. Um, because sometimes we question what we don't know. And so I want you to know that we are there. Um, uh, you've seen a lot of dust and a lot of traffic, but it's a good thing. We will have 50 families. The rents are, you know, rather, rather elevated. So um, if you have questions, I will, I have information. Um, it's not here to rent, but to let you know, we are for rentals, not for purchase. Uh, they do go through a screening process. They have to have a deposit. They have to have a criminal background check. They have, I mean, they will be anybody's neighbor that you will want. They will bring an eco economic stimulus to the city because we all, if you work here, you pay taxes. Um, the owner pays taxes on the property. And I think we're a good addition. We're right across from uh, the Kane Griffin Park it is. And I try to tell people we're down the street from um, the Marcos Pizza, which is very important. And so um, we, uh, 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 when I, we finish this one, we're moving out to Sunset Village, which will be 235 single families for rent um, on 231 and 390. So I think this is a wonderful community, 32444 for two years. Uh, believe it or not, uh, coming here from Cleveland, Ohio, I saw campers and I saw more to Lynn Haven than any other community. And so wonderful people, nice people. <laughs> and, you know, it's tough, but you're great. And I thank you so much. And I, it's a very, very nice community. So if anybody has any questions, I can be found at 1009 Parkview Drive, which is a new Parkview, um, uh, 32444. And we're called Parkview Townhouses at Lynn Haven. Thank and you. I am so glad to be a part of your community. If you need anything from me, we're, I want to be a good neighbor. Thank you so, so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you very much. We appreciate that very much. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the commission? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year, sir. 2020 is also hindsight. And uh, I'm Ron Merritt, 414 Colorado. You guys have all seen the big package of stuff I sent you about Colorado. Has some Colorado Avenue people here. <laughs> and you as well. Uh, and the issue, and I'm going to do this on the public hearing side of it, rather, or the comment side, rather than in the sure. agenda. Things so I can go home and not have to endure all of this. But we have three concerns. I just got a, a package from Chris Forehand uh, that addresses many of the issues that we're concerned about. But what I really wanted to say was... <clears throat> As we look back as an opportunity to rebuild the city, but also look back at the, the former footprints of streets and roads, we have an opportunity here. We can do what we are allowed to do. We can also do what we should do. So even though we can do something, that doesn't mean we have to do it that way. So I'm appealing to, on two things. One, almost everybody I've talked to on Colorado Avenue who lives there wants to see Colorado Avenue return to its dead-end status, not a through street. There's a lot of arguments for that and against that, and I have signatures almost everybody on the street who would simply like the city to explore the idea of returning it to a dead-end street. I know there's all kinds of issues. We can hammer that out. Don't need to do it here. Um, stormwater drainage will run off. Anderson Bay is very important, and we may not have done all the best things in the past. If we have a chance to do it right. Let's do it right this time. If for some reason it's necessary for Colorado Avenue to attach itself to Country Club Drive, whatever, 
then let's do it right. Let's acquire the property formally, buy the land, not just pay easements. That's the best way. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Happy New Year. Thank you Thank very you. much. Anyone else? Public commentary. Um, yes, ma'am. Can I say something based on sure. the same thing? Sure. I'm short. You're so. fine. I'm Donna Tran. I live, I've lived on Colorado for 25 years at either 406 or 408. I was on Colorado Avenue when it was a dirt road. And you know how lovely it is to live on a dirt road. It's, buh, 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 you know, you drive all the way down. And I was thrilled when we learned they were going to pave that little section that ran towards the country club. Until they paved that little section mm -hmm. that turned sharply, very narrow, and, and came up to the country club drive. And the day after they paved it, it became a high-speed thoroughfare, teenagers, whoom. I had my children come in and say, Mom, I raised three children on that corner. Mom, I had to jump in the bushes to avoid being hit because of the half of the country club decided it was a shortcut. I don't think it was designed to be a shortcut. Um, all of the service trucks that would bring food and alcohol and golf carts and everything started using it as a service road and between all of that it has been torn to shreds and never really treated I don't feel like a lot of the main roads in Lynn Haven it's it's quite narrow right in front of where the old golf cart shack used to be I know some of my neighbors have to buy sandbags every time it rains because of the runoff from the golf cart shack coming into their driveway and garages I just um I'd like it, if I had my ways, I'd like to see it be a dead end because of the safety. Or, or have maybe police officers sit there and, and pay attention to how fast people are just flying around that corner or put some sort of stop sign or something to slow people down. That's my concern. It's become dangerous, I feel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and we, do, we do have a traffic committee in place, and I'm sure they're listening to what your concerns are. I see Chief nodding his head, and, and he'll, be, he'll be on top of that right away, I'm sure, looking at that. Yes, ma'am, please go ahead. Hi. Hello. My name is Janice Roberts. First time I've come to a commissioner's meeting. Welcome. This is a small detail, personal. Uh, I have signed up for a grant for the $1,000. And I called the well, utility office this afternoon, and they said there was a list of waiters, people waiting, because they have to raise more money to give us some. Do you have any idea if my name's on the list? Here's how we can do that. If okay. you will come by the office, if you applied, and uh, Julie Higby, who is our assistant here, she can help you and make sure that your application is, is there and on file. Okay. And the way that this has been handled, we've been able to award 225 grants thus far, and the money is raised privately. It's been really my project. It's, the commission is the board, but it has been my project from the very beginning. And um, this money is a joy to distribute. It's very difficult to raise. Sometimes we get different amounts. We've gotten checks for $25,000. We've gotten checks for fifty. dollars As soon as we get money in, mm -hmm. as soon as it comes in, we immediately pull more applications and, and give the money out. We do not keep the money in the account. And so we have approximately 1,200 applications left right now to fill. And, <laughs> um, and I should have a big garage sale. Well, you <laughs> just get, money no. Well, you give me an opportunity to say one more time: if any large corporation or philanthropist is listening, I need 1.2 million dollars donated oh, to the Lynn Haven all? City Hurricane Let me Relief write Fund. You a check, so you write me a check. Well, we've we've received some large donations. <laughs> I'll, I'll, we we recently received 50,000 from Florida Blue. We received 25,000 from someone locally. Yeah. Um, and um, your mayor has also given ten thousand dollars. So there's well, there's been you, there's been money given, and I've never said that publicly before. But uh, there was some question about what was happening to the money, so I just decided I'd throw that out there today. That's good. Um, but um, oh, I normally wouldn't apply for it. You're eligible if you live in Lynn Haven. Normally, I have money, <laughs> <laughs> but because of probably ninety nine point nine percent of the people in this room was affected mm -hmm. by Michael. 
and I'm one of the percentage that has not been paid by my lawyer. And and there you know, are many in that. And and I'm going to hope for you that very soon we'll have the money to fill your application. And thank you for coming and asking the question. But please feel free to come by and see Julie. She'll help you. Miss Julie. Even after the meeting, if you'd like to talk with her, okay? okay. And make sure your application is still active. And good luck. I hope you're in the next round, ma'am. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the commission on any topic? Okay, we'll move on then to item number eight, which is a public hearing. And um, this will require me to state the time, which is 4.56 Central Time. And at this time, we have the final reading of Ordinance Number 1087, a small-scale future land use map amendment requesting a land designation change from low to medium density resi residential. I would advise the Commission we will not be voting until item number 13 on this. This is a public hearing. So if we could read the ordinance at this time. Ordinance number 1087, an ordinance providing for the adoption pursuant to Chapter 163, Florida Statutes, of a land use change from low density residential to medium density residential for an approximate 5.0 plus acres of property located at 707 17th Street East in the city of Lynn Haven, Bay County, Florida, repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith and providing an effective date. Thank you, Ms. Gaynor. Ms. Richard, did you have a report on this item that you wanted to bring forward? Please yes. go ahead. Yes, thank you. The applicant has requested that the city changes the future land use designation of this vacant parcel from low density residential to medium density residential. The current land use of adjacent properties is as follows. To the north is recreation open space. The south is low density residential. The east is low density residential, but to the west is medium density residential. So it is adjacent to existing medium density residential. It is a small scale future land use map amendment that's being requested and um, staff recommends approval. The current future land use designation of low density residential allows for the development of single family homes at a density of up to 4.99 dwelling units per acre. The requested future land use map designation of medium density residential allows for single family homes and also multifamily homes. There's a minimum density requirement of four dwelling units per acre and a maximum density of 10 dwelling units per acre is allowed. The item went before the Planning Commission on December 3rd, 2019, where the Planning Commission voted unanimously to recommend approval. Thank you very much. Is there anyone from the public who has a question or who would like to speak to this um, ordinance? Uh, yes, Mrs. Walker. Janet Walker, 1106 Michigan Avenue. On this sheet of paper prepared by Amanda on uh, item four, it says advertise yes. The date was Friday, December the 20th. It says here 2020, it should be 2019. Um, I have the paper from that day in my hand, and I don't see that advertised. If you could uh, address the commission, and Ms. Richard, do you have the, the date for the, for the advertisement, or if you could address how it was advertised, please? This was advertised on its own as a public hearing, for a public hearing. I'll have that in the actual um, amendment folder which I have in the office if Mrs. Walker would like to come and have a look at that tomorrow I can show her okay. the advert. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Are there other questions or comments on this particular item during the public hearing? From the public. Okay. Um, I will declare then this public hearing closed and that is at 459. We'll move on to items 9 through 11. This is a consent agenda. There are three items, the minutes from the last meeting, which was December 10th. Item number 10, the discussion and possible approval of the TetraTAC task orders for the HMGP projects. Number 11, the discussion and possible approval of the award uh, to lowest bidder. We can shade it on RFP number 19 slash 20 dash 3, providing sun shades for various city facilities. Um, at this time, is there any item that any commissioner would like to remove from the consent agenda and address on its own or are we is there a motion to accept all three as they are so moved second there's a motion and a second any discussion from the commission yes mayor if i may go ahead uh, and i can discuss just one of these yes okay on the um 
we can shade it Is that RFP I would like to um, make a motion if possible that if we accept this bid for 140,000 that uh, we accept it with the contingency that they cannot put in change orders to increase the price okay so are you putting that in the form of a motion I guess so <laughs> is there a second to that motion Mayor, there's already a, a, a motion and a second on the table. Oh, I did. I went forward with another motion. Thank you okay. for that correction. So um, let me just ask for a little direction from the attorney. Should we just ask to pull number 11 out and then we'll come back to it? Yes, ma'am. Based okay. off on Commissioner Tender's desire to discuss and potentially have some action on one item, so we should pull, pull that item, uh, leaving the remaining two consent agenda items. I would suggest we resolve the remaining two consent agenda, uh, consent agenda items and then go back okay. to the item that uh, Commissioner Tender is uh, Thank you. Thank discuss. you for that direction. Okay, so there is a motion on the floor that we um, accept the consent agenda items. Now we um, have discussion on number 11, so we're not going to include that. So um, is the motion... Uh, did, did, Mayor, I'll, I'll amend my motion. For nine and ten, yes, ma'am. For nine and ten, and remove eight or no, remove number eleven and put it into the main agenda at the. At the Thank end. you. And is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Um, any further discussion from the board? Any from the public? For removing the item from the agenda, Miss Walker. Um, okay. This this particular motion is to keep the minutes and the discussion approval of Tetratech under the same items we're just voting right now to remove number 11 and keep the other two under the consent I'll give another opportunity to speak in just a moment yes you may okay Miss Gaynor would you please call the roll um, you're calling the roll and my understanding for the first motion that was made that we keep items number 9 and 10 <coughs> under the consent agenda and alleviate number 11 until we finish with the first okay. two okay Thank you. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Commissioner Parno? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so our consent agenda is now the minutes and the discussion and possible approval of Tetra Tech task orders for the HMGP projects. Are there any comments or discussion on those two items? And then the public did have a comment on the minutes. Ms. Walker, please go ahead. Walk 11 of 6 Michigan Avenue on uh, the last page of the minutes, item 25. It says, first reading of Ordinance 1087, a small-scale future land use map amendment requesting a land designation change from low to medium density residential. Then it says, city manager read Ordinance 1086. And it was talking about 1087. It should be corrected. Yes, ma'am. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. So we'll make that correction to the minutes. Are there any other discussion or comments for corrections or additions? There appear to be none. Is there a motion to accept items number 9 and 10? Or approve, rather, not accept? So moved with um, Ms. Walker's correction to the minutes. Thank you. Second. There is a motion to approve with the correction and a second. Any further discussion? Any further from the public? Ms. Gaynor, please call the roll. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Parno? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So items number nine and ten, numbers nine and ten are approved. We'll move to item number 11, which is discussion and possible approval of award to lowest bidder. We can shade it on RFP number 19 slash 20 3, providing sunshades for various city facilities. Um, Commissioner Tender, I believe that you had, um, uh, you, were, you made a motion that, please repeat it for me, please. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to make a motion that if we should accept this at $140,000, that uh, we do it with a contingency that they cannot come back with change orders requesting more money. And I'd like to say why I'm asking for that. Okay. The next closest bidder was 370, $318,000. Um, when I saw that, my red light went off. 140 is so much less than 318. There has to be something wrong, in my opinion, with that bid. Um, I did do a lot of background check on the company and, and all of that, and I won't get into that publicly, but I will say that it just put off, you know, more red lights going on. For somebody to come in that low to get a job, I fear that they their tactic is to come in that low and then come back with change order after change order 
until we end up paying them a lot more. So that's been, my that's okay. my concern. Okay, so there's been a motion placed on the floor by Commissioner Tinder that if we accept this um, bid of one hundred forty thousand dollars, that there would be no change orders. Is there a second to that motion, or is there further discussion? Mayor, I'll make a second. Okay, so there's a second. There would be no change orders. It would remain at that price. Is there further discussion? Yes, I, yes, I, yes. Oh, uh, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. If you don't mind, um, uh, I, I made the second basically because I wanted to discuss it. And okay. That's the only way to do it. I want to make sure that uh, that this, the uh, city attorney and city manager are okay with that. I don't want to tie their hands. Um, are, are we okay with that motion? Mayor, the only thing that will be is in the RFP, it does say that uh, any additional um, city properties that we may um, ask this uh, company to do, you'll see that the company here is uh, is in Bay County, and then the company that uh, bid at the 318 is, of course, is, uh, I think it's in Tarpers. Tarpon Springs, Florida. Um, this particular company has done shades for us before. Could we clarify for the public um, which parks that this would entail, which <clears throat> playgrounds? Yes, ma'am. It will be Sheffield Park, Kinsall Park, um, King Griffin Park when that one is up and going. Uh, and um, then we said any additional, uh, uh, excuse me, in the dog park, because that's an area where people walk their dogs and they, and they don't have any shade out there. And so it's not fine. including the new playground at Porter Park, is that correct? Or are we looking at that one as well? And Porter Park. It thank does you, include Mayor. that one. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Mayor, if I, if I may speak yes. for just a second on that. You know, I, I go, I take my children to these parks all the time and, and don't don't spill the beans here okay but i go incognito a lot so i can talk to to people out there and you know i'm dressed down ball cap on all this and i just want to see what they think you know what they feel about their parks and when they're out there playing with their children or grandchildren and one of the things i hear most is i just wish they had put some shade out here not the trees are gone mm -hmm. i mean I, I was just out there this past weekend and a grandmother was out there with her granddaughter and that's what she said it'd be so nice to have some shade out here you know and i of course not getting out of my character i said well wouldn't it be nice you know <laughs> that would be nice but i just wanted to put that out there that it is important to many of our citizens i was i would say that the shades are extremely important um something i've been trying to do um for four years at the parks because not only does the sun degrade the equipment without it being covered you can see that at the old uh, playgrounds but uh, most of our playgrounds even when the trees were here were set in such a way that the sun had the slides and the swings so hot that the children couldn't sit on them so i'm i'm very excited that this is finally going to happen so May that's my if yes. i may say something yes i too agree with this i love the idea of the shades and it even concerns me more that you're telling me for 140,000, they're going to do four parks. That's even more concerning. But can it be worded, and I'm asking the attorney this, can it be worded that for these four projects, they have quoted us 140,000? It doesn't have to involve anything that you might tack on in the future. I'm sure we'll pay them long before we tack on anything else. Yes, ma'am. The, the response of bidders, or both bidders in this case, have an obligation to stand by the price that they provided as long as the scope stays the same based off of their response. So through RFP itself called for four, a price for four parks and an evaluation of that price and their skills, and the city accepts one of those bidders, in this case the low bidder, then they are going to be bound as long as the city doesn't change the scope. Even if um, they and I, it, typically I don't have this particular solicitation in front of me, so don't hold me to this, but typically solicitations put the onus on the bidders to go and evaluate the sites. So if they were to go out there and not make it up, but if there's a sinkhole or something like that, that is going to be their responsibility. Um, the only other thing that I could see that may um, give an, a company a leeway to increase the price would be some sort of act of God, but uh, even then we typically require builders risk insurance and things like that. And it can be written into the contract in black, white, bold, and underlined to mm -hmm. um, alleviate any questions. Or, I, Mayor, I would even be happy if we just put in there that if they should want change orders, that it has to pass through this commission so that we can do all the homework and check what they looked at and what was uh, originally scoped. And Would you like to amend your motion to reflect that, Commissioner Tinder? Yes. I'd like to make a motion that should we accept this bid, that if any change orders come through on it, that it has to come before the commission. 
um, before they're, you know, before they're approved just to. Is there a second to yeah. Commissioner Tender's amended motion? I'll second that motion too. There's been a, a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion about the shades from the commission? Any from the public? Um, Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Parno? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So moving on to old business, this will be the second reading. <clears throat> this is item number 12 of ordinance number 1086, amending section 6.05.00, transportation access and parking requirements of the city unified land development code. Action will be, will be necessary and um, let's first read ordinance 1086, please, Ms. Gaynor. <clears throat> An ordinance of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, amending section 6.05.00 of the Lynn Haven Uni Unified Land Development Code as it relates to transportation, access, and parking requirements, repealing all ordinances in conflict and providing for an immediately effective date. Thank you. Is there a motion for approval? Mayor, I'll make a motion for the pro for the purpose of discussion. There's been a motion. <clears throat> Is there a second? I'll second that. There's been a motion and a second. I'm assuming that we need um, maybe possibly more information. Um, would you like the planning director to bring forward some information, or do you just have a specific question you would like to ask of her? Um, I, I'm, actually, I think I've got all the information I, I, I need. Um, okay. But I would like to explain my, think my reasoning. Okay. Um, unless some department head or some employee can explain to me why we need to change the land use code um, to, to change this. My understanding, and, and, and Ms. Richard can correct me if I'm wrong, we now require cul-de-sacs at the end of dead-end roads. This will change our land use to allow them to use other methods, either a, you know, a T or some, I would assume that's probably the only other method. Um, I have met with the fire chief. I've talked to the police chief. I've talked to the um, public works director. My concern is the ability for fire trucks, garbage trucks to be able to turn around at the end of these roads. Um, the police chief has told me that typically a, 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 a T at the end of the road ends up turning into a parking lot, that uh, the people that live on the end of those roads park their boats on there, they park their spare cars on there, and then you have issues with the fire trucks getting on there and not being able to turn around. So unless some department head can explain to me why we need to do this um, and why it's a benefit for the city, I, I, I can't see how I can support it. I'll go with um, uh, Ms. Richard, if you don't mind, as planning director, could you speak to the, to the question from the commissioner? Or The reason that this was brought before you was because we had had, um, we've had a couple of developers submit subdivisions uh, where they had hammerheads and as we have always done in the past, we've told them when we review, when it goes through the technical review committee, the, the city does not allow hammerheads. The code says that hammerheads aren't allowed. Uh, a recent uh, meeting, TRC meeting, one of the developers' representatives asked why they were not allowed. Why was it in the code that they were not allowed? And um, the city manager was there at the time. <laughs> we w went around all of the department heads, and I asked each and each one of them, can you tell me why this is in the code? Because this code was here when I came to the city, so I don't really know why it's in the code like this. Nobody at that time knew or could give me a good answer as to why the code said that. And so um, I, it was decided to go ahead and bring it to you so that you could all decide whether you wanted to change the code or not. And it was following that decision after I'd already advertised it to take it to the planning board that, um, well, actually at the planning board, one of the planning board members voted nay. All the others voted right. yes. And after that planning board meeting, I guess people got to talking. Um, and that's when people started, you know, asking the fire chief and I guess the police chief. So the reason this was brought to you is because we could not at that time tell them why, nobody could tell them why it was in the code that way. So we brought it to you so that you could decide. And then once we get a definitive answer, then, you know, we can lay that one to rest. Okay. I thought I recall reading that the fire chief had no objection to this. Am I incorrect on that, Chief Delange? Could you speak to that, please? That, that is Do you, thank you. That is correct. We don't have anything in our code that prohibits them. Okay. Um, 
you know, it's, we're not a big fan of them. Okay. But but there is no code saying you cannot have them. Okay. Thank you very much. And then Chief Ramey. Okay. All right. Mr. Baker, did you want to say something? But it was but it was due to trash trucks. He was thinking difficulty in turning around. Okay. Anyone else from uh, the the public have comments about it? Allowing um, a little difference in that variation. Yes, sir. There are several dead end streets. If you come forward, sir. Sure. I'm sorry. It's just. Okay. A no yeah, there there are dead end streets all over town, Iowa, Mississippi. How the trash trucks handle that? Uh, you know. So are we going to go back and ask every street to have a cul-de-sac or a T or hammerhead? Uh, because trash trucks are still pulling the trash off of Iowa and Mississippi. Tr fire trucks can turn around. Police can get down there and turn around. So, you know, if we're going to apply this, let's apply it to everyone the same. Thank you, sir. Okay, there's been a motion and a second on the floor. Um, there was some concern. Ms. Richards brought up some of the um, concerns that she um, heard from department heads. Fire chief has offered that uh, he's not a great fan of them, but there's no ordinance against it. Police chief offers no objection. So are there further questions from the commission? No, ma'am. I mean, if 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 I make it, ma'am. Of course, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, if um, if our department heads are okay with it, um, obviously, you know, we need as many houses as we can get. So, I mean, if this Im improves the ability of a developer to put more houses on a property, it's more property taxes for the city of Lynn Haven, and it's it's more development, more houses. So, as long as our <coughs> department heads are okay with it, then then I'll uh, mm. relinquish my uh, complaint. Mr. Pardo. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think what we're in question about is the fact that people might use these hammerheads as a parking lot and they're therefore deter emergency vehicle or garbage truck from turning around. So I would be all for it too if we if we scored the, the, the you know, if it, it's in the site review that if they're going to use a hammerhead that we score it and make it a towaway zone at the owner's expense. So therefore it's 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 colored, it's painted. And there's a towaway sign, so people know that they're not going to be able to park there. Well, or just for put the a sake boat of or an RV there. For the sake of discussion, would you do the same thing on every cul-de-sac though, because people park along the curbs in those too? So I'm just asking. But cul-de-sacs have an open area in the middle where they can get they can get a turn in. The, on, a, on a on a T, you can't. I'm just talking about if you were parked all along the curb, it'd be very difficult to, to turn no, around. I've seen that done too. Yep. So Mayor, I'm just, if, I'm, if I may. Yes, go ahead, please. Um, I might suggest asking uh, Chief Ramey, but I, I believe if you park in the roadway, he has the right to tell you for parking in the roadway anyway. Mayor? Thank you. Commissioner Tender? Um, I would just like to ask Chief Delange one question. Um, have you ever been in a situation where you've pulled into one of these and not been able to get out or somebody's life is compromised because of it? In the 26 years, I can't recall. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Finch? Yes, I'm the one doing it. Project, the hammerhead, you know, the cul-de-sacs usually they, they make them too little or whatever. They can't turn around. But this you can pull in and back out. But the main thing is, if you got a hammerhead, you can take and put a dumpster in there, and put it at the end of the uh, hammerhead, or you can put the mailboxes on the end of the hammerhead and they back up and go. But you can mark them with a striping and whatever, and I'll work with a city to stripe them any way they want to, no parking or, you know, whatever. But it, <clears throat> if there's a parking place down there, you know, somebody goes parking, if it's cul-de-sac or hammerhead or somebody trying to park on it, but you got to just tow them or whatever. But the hammerheads are a little wider. The roads are uh, two foot wider than what the city requires, so we made the roads wider. And uh, But hammerheads can go away, but I thought it was it's just it's want to wanna be the one, but... You can upgrade the hammerheads when you can't really upgrade a, a cul de sac. That's good. Thank you. Other questions from the commission for Ms. Richard or for the developer? Anyone? Are we good? So we've had a first and a second um, motion on this. Um, no further discussion from the public. Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Mayor Anderson. Yes, so that stands approved. And then moving on to item number 13. This is the second reading of ordinance number 1087, a small scale future land use map amendment requesting a land designation change from low to medium density residential. This also requires action. Um, if we could for, first read ordinance 1087, I believe this is it right here. Yeah. 
1087? Yes. yes. An ordinance providing for the adoption pursuant to Chapter 163, Florida Statutes of a Land Use Change from Low Density Residential to Medium Density, density Residential for an approximate 5.0 plus acres of property located at 707 17th Street East in the city of Lynn Haven, Bay County, Florida, repealing all ordinances in conflict wherewith and providing an effective date. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. So there is a motion and a second. Is there any discussion from the commission or questions? There appear to be none. Any from the public? Uh, yes, Mrs. Walker. <clears throat> John Walker, 1106 Michigan Avenue. A technical question, please. Ms. Richmond, Richard said that she does have that copy of that advertisement. If in fact it is not the correct advertisement, because there is an advertisement that day, but it's not for the property you're speaking of. If it's not the correct advertisement, would your vote be null and void? I'll defer to Mr. Albritton. We would need to cure the deficiency. Thank you. We would need to cure the deficiency. So if the advertisement was not done properly, yeah. uh, the only way to cure that it would be to re-advertise and bring it back before the commission, in my opinion. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So it stands approved um, pending the advertisement question. Thank you. Um, item number 14 is new business. This is a quasi-judicial quasi hearing which will acquire, um, require people to be sworn in. So I'm going to state the time of the opening of this um, judicial hearing is 522 Central Time. And then I will defer to Mr. Albritton to swear in any people who need to be sworn in. And Mayor, before I swear in, I would ask the commission for any ex parte communication related to this topic, if there has been any ex parte communication. I've had none. I've had none. I've had none. None. None for me. Okay. With that being said, all those planning to give testimony in this matter, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So up you got. I do. Thank you, Mayor. The applicant has requested the approval of the preliminary plan for the townhome subdivision known as Landings Landings, a residential townhome development consisting of 72 homes on the 7.3 acre vacant parcel located on Highway 389, south of Highway 390. The parcel number is 11536-010-000. Again, this request is for the approval of the preliminary plat for the construction of 72 townhomes and accompanying infrastructure. The preliminary plat has been reviewed in accordance with city and state requirements and has been found to be in compliance. The stormwater facilities, homeowner associations and common areas will be privately maintained. This plat went before the Planning Commission on January the 6th, 2020, who recommended approval unanimously. Thank you. Is there a motion from the commission? So moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or questions from the commission? There appear to be none. Are there any questions from the public? There appear to be none. Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Parno? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Mayor? Approved. Item number 15. It's another quasi-judicial hearing, state time of opening and closing. So that will be 524 Central Time. I'll defer to Mr. Albritton at this time. Again, I'd ask, apologies. Again, I'd ask the commission uh, for disclosure of any ex parte communication. I've yeah. had none. 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 I've had none. I've had none. Okay. And all those planning to give testimony in this matter, if you would please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So up you got. I do. Thank you. So uh, we just had the preliminary plat for Landings Landings Townhomes. This is the development order application. So the applicant is requesting to actually be able to go ahead and pull permits and break ground on constructing the 72 dwelling unit townhome development on the 7.3 vacant parcel. The property has a land use of mixed use, which allows for a density of up to 10 dwelling units per acre where there is no commercial on the same site and there isn't on this site. 
The proposed residential community is on the west side of Highway 389, just south of Aberdeen Parkway, and is currently vacant. The applicant would like to construct 70, 72, it says on here 50, but it's 72 residential units and supporting infrastructure. And as I mentioned before, the stormwater system will remain private and will be maintained by the Homeowners Association. There is something that I would like to bring to your attention that wasn't in the car. And um, I have a letter here from um, Greg Kidwell, who is the utilities supervisor. And at the TRC meeting, this was brought up, and it was brought up also at a TRC for a uh, potential development called Andrews Plantation Phase 2, which has not yet come to us for a development order. And per the utility supervisor, Greg Kidwell, this project and Andrews Plantation Phase 2 are going to require that there is a lift station upgrade to lift station number 31, which is on Dundee Lane. This upgrade has not taken place. Therefore, if the development order is approved by the City Commission tonight, staff recommend that the approval is contingent upon no connections to sewer services or certificate of occupancies being issued until the lift station has been upgraded and the receiving manhole in the southwest corner has been raised. Okay. And I, I was um, listening when you said that it, um, according to the document which we have in front of us, that's 50 units and you're correcting that to 72, correct? Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion pending um, the uh, requirements of our uh, utilities director. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion and a second. Are there questions or discussion from the commission? There appear to be none. Are there any questions from the public? There appear to be none. Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Parno? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes, stands approved, and this uh, public hearing is closed at 527. Excuse me, quasi-judicial hearing, not public. Sorry. Item number 16, a quasi-judicial hearing, state time of opening and closing. The beginning time, I've got someone trying to call me, <laughs> is 527. And I will defer to Mr. Albritton. Again, I would ask the commission for disclosure of any ex parte communication. I've had none. None. I, none. None. I've had none. All those planning to give testimony in this matter, would you please stand and raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so if you got? Yes. Can I just confirm that this is the uh, quasi-judicial hearing for the Bay County Sheriff's Office special facility? Yes. Vehicle facility? Thank you. This is a development order approval to construct a 9,000 square feet special vehicle facility on the 0 0.377 acre parcel located at 303 34th Street East in the city of Lynn Haven. Parcel number 11810-000-000. This property came before you not so long ago for an annexation. The county wanted to annex this parcel of land which is adjacent to the existing Bay County Sheriff's Office into the city of Lynn Haven. And this, uh, that was granted and they changed the land use on it. And now they have come before you uh, for permission to be able to build a special vehicle facility, which I believe will house uh, vehicles that will assist in case there's another hurricane. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion from the board or questions? Any from the public? There appear to be none. Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Commissioner Parno? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. It stands approved. This hearing is 529 and complete. Move on to item 17 which is discussion and possible approval of the development order for Hilltop Point Apartments. Uh, do we have a report, Ms. Richard? We're working you hard tonight. Yes, <laughs> this is another quasi-judicial. I missed that. I apologize. Yeah. Um, I will defer to Mr. Albritton. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Again, I'd ask the Commission for disclosure of any ex parte communication. I've had none. None. I've none. had none. I've had none. Those planning to give testimony, if you would please stand and raise your right arm. Right arm. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. 
And and just so that you all know, the gentleman that's standing up um, is uh, Chris from uh, Dubry, and he is the one who reviews the engineering and the utilities for the city to make sure that they meet all the requirements. This is a request for development order approval to construct, and this is where the 50 comes from, a 50 <coughs> dwelling unit apartment development on the 14.95 acre vacant parcel, which is located at 4514 Hilltop Lane. Part, there's two parcel numbers, one large one, 11518-000-000 and 11520-040-000. So there's a large parcel and then just a small piece. The applicant is requesting a development order for this 14.95-acre uh, property. The property has a future land use map designation of medium density residential, which allows for a density of between four and ten dwelling units per acre and allows for apartments. The proposed residential community is on the east side of Hilltop Lane. It's actually on the west side. And the property is currently vacant. The applicant would like to construct 50 residential units and supporting infrastructure on this property. The stormwater system will remain <coughs> private. The site plans have been reviewed and have been found to be in compliance with the City of Linhaven Unified Land Development Code, technical standards, and Florida state requirements. And Thank this item you. was heard by Planning Commission on January the 6th and recommended approval. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. There's been a motion and a second for approval of the development order for Hilltop Point Apartments. Are there any uh, discussion, questions from the commission? Mayor, if I may? Yes, please. I just want to let everybody know that I, I met with the uh, city manager over this uh, um, development. I had some concerns about the um, additional traffic on Hilltop coming on to 390. Um, and she kind of alleviated that. I mean, once, once we go to a four lane, you'll, you'll be able to pull out of there and have a dedicated turn lane is what she's implying or merge lane. So I think that's going to alleviate the problem. I had the other issue I had, and it's an ongoing issue with the city of Linhaven that I, that I think that the city manager is going to look at addressing. And that is the private storm order issue. Um, right now, I do not believe the city has any teeth to for, force a development into maintaining those systems. So if it fails, the city has to go in and fix it. So she's looking at a way to, to make it to where the city can, can go back and recoup that money if, if, the, if the city has to go in and fix the stormwater, as in this case and the, the prior um, vote, both those are going to have private stormwater systems. So um, but that, I just wanted to let the commission know that I did address that with the city manager. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. So did we had a motion and a second, correct? Yes. Any other discussion? Thank you. Any from the public? Uh, Mr. Walker. Um, I noticed three developments we discussed, and we're discussing this one here. Um, I visited one today, and I do not see any affordable housing involved here. Yes. Is this one? Yes. This one is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions from the public? Um, yes, sir. Brad Yunt, 210 Lakeview Terrace. And I'm interested in following up on Mr. Russell's comment. Uh, as a HOA president, I don't want responsibility for stormwater management. I really don't want it. I don't understand it. I don't want to get in the middle of it. I want it done right, and I want the city to be responsible for it. And my question is, what's in it for the developer to push that on the <clears throat> HOA? It's a cram-down situation. We get no say in the matter. We just get it. Excellent question, Mr. Young. Any other comments? At this time, uh, Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. It stands approved, and this hearing uh, is complete at 534 Central Time. Item number 18 is discussion and possible approval of right-of-way use agreement at 1918 Quail Run, and I believe this report is from Mr. Janke, our Economic Development Director. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the city received a right-of-way use agreement request from Ms. Aaron Ruppel and Mr. Carl Ferrara. Um, they both live at 1918 Quail Run, and this property uh, is uh, 
ties into Vermont Avenue on the backside. If you take a look at your agenda packet, there is a map that outlines the proposed location of the requested easement. Um, and at this point, they're just requesting the approval of this um, easement to get access to the backside of their property. And, and my understanding is that there's no environmental impact and that's been approved and every, everything's fine. Well, DOT, uh, DEP, um, stated that um, no permit is required if no wetlands are impacted and no stormwater systems are being impacted. Um, if you look at the map, there's this um, dark area right next to this uh, property and to this easement, and that is actually a stormwater system. And um, there's only a couple of feet between the neighbor's fence and that stormwater pond. So you could only gain access to the backside of the property probably by foot. But if you want to use a vehicle, you would definitely have to bring in some fill, probably possibly move uh, a stormwater pipe. So there would be some, some modification re required. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there a motion for approval? Well, Dan, let me, let me ask you, I just want to be, you know, when I sat on that side, it was always well, what's common sense, right? Is there any issues that you see in your, from the city standpoint of us moving forward with this? I mean, are there any drawbacks, legalities, anything that you see? And I'm not putting you on the spot as far as you're res responsible for this answer, as far as, you know, I just want to make sure that common sense wise, we're, we've looked at this, we've looked at DEP, we've looked at everything. And there's, there's really not a problem other than us saying yes or no. If, if somebody wants to get access, uh, wants to use this r proposed right-of-way easement, um, this area would have to be modified. And that would require, number one, some engineering plans, mm -hmm. and number two, some uh, approval, some, a permit from DEP or maybe the Water Management District that says, yes, the, these proposed changes meet the stormwater requirements. And that falls on the city to do those that work, or could the developer... No, that that or the property owner is up to the city commission. But typically, the 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 property owner would would pay for that. Okay, let's make sure I understand everything mm -hmm. before we. May if I may? Please go ahead. Um, <laughs> since we're not allowed to discuss without a motion or a second. Um, well, actually, you can ask questions to. Well, yeah, to Mr. I, I, but I wanted to I would not ask a question. I wanted to make a statement. Um, so. Um, well, go ahead. And okay. Answer. Well, I I would highly recommend each of the commissioners go out and look at this property. Um, and the reason I say that I went out there today and, and, and got out and looked and walked around the property. The first issue is the end of Vermont is in the city of Lynn Haven and the two houses on each side of that road are Lynn Haven citizens. The, the person that's asking for this is a county resident, not a city resident. So our duty is to the citizens of Lynn Haven. Um, if you go look, I personally don't see how you're going to put a road in without putting a bulkhead in and backfilling. You know, you're, you're if you, when you go out and look, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's a culvert, and then there's maybe six or seven, eight feet between the culvert and the right property's fence. So you're going to run right down this gentleman's property, right down his property line, right down his fence to get to a county property. Um, I don't think we'd be doing a service to a Lynn Haven citizen by doing this. Um, but that being said, I would like to make a motion that I that we table this to give each commissioner a chance to go out and look at it and they can make their own decision. I'll second that. There's been a motion and a second um, that we uh, table this until the next meeting uh, to give opportunity for more investigation by those commissioners who may not have seen the property uh, personally. So is there further discussion? Um, any from the public? Um, Ms. Gaynor, would you call the roll? Commissioner Rog Russell? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Um, item number 19 is discussion and possible approval of the employment contract for city manager Vicki Gaynor and Commissioner Aldridge um, was uh, tasked with doing the negotiations for um, this contract by the commission and so I will give the floor to him at this time. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we, we did meet multiple times. Um, Miss Vicki and I and, and our city attorney um, met and 
like with any contract that you do, um, you know, there was negotiation, there was discussion that took place. And um, one of the things that we discussed was the state of where our city was right this moment and what's going to make uh, what's going to make Miss Vicky happy doing the, the monumental task that's in front of her um, and, and make us happy as a city that we feel like it was a fair negotiation that took place between both parties. That being said, I feel like, and I can't speak for Ms. Vicky, even though I think I know what she would say, um, I feel like we have reached a mutual agreement um, on her contract. Um, now, that being said, I'm, I'm going to let our attorney just, you know, kind of lay out what we agreed to um, for Ms. Vicky for the rest of the board and for the public, and then, you know, we can look at discussion uh, going forward if necessary. Thank you, Commissioner Aldridge. Um, Mr. Albritton. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, pursuant to my understanding in the drafted agreement, um, the agreement is for a term of three years, uh, calls for Ms. Gaynor to receive payment in the yearly amount divided over 12 equal payments of $115,000 a year. She would be compensated in the amount of $24,930, which would represent the salary difference between the time she was named acting city manager and January of 2020. That payment would be divided up in two separate ways. Uh, a, uh, she would receive a lump sum payment of $12,465, uh, due within 10 days of the effective date of this agreement, with the balance of the amount owed paid on 12 equal installments of $1,038.75, so long as she's employed by the city. Uh, further, she would receive a $450 per month automobile allowance and be provided with a city uh, cellular telephone. Lastly, um, which was an, uh, uh, an addition, would be that the city acknowledges that the city manager, and I'll read it, has requested that the vesting period for the general employees retirement fund be shortened to allow her to vest within five years of service. I believe that is the high points. If there's any specific questions, I'll do my best to address them. Yes, and, and at, at, at this at this point, um, if we could um, allow Ms. Gaynor to um, speak and voice should this be approved by the commission, if this is indeed your desire, if this if this contract does uh, relate your feelings of fairness and that you'll be willing to to work with this contract if it should be approved. There was one thing, if I can, that we left out. Okay, I'm Commissioner sure. Aldrich had one thing he'd like to add. Yes, just um, we, we also agreed upon the uh, an annual review that would be at the discretion of the board for bonus, raise, or both. Um, so, I, you know, one of the ways we came up with some of these pay scales was through, you know, state numbers. Um, and history of previous city managers, excluding the, the previous, of course. Um, but anyway, I, I, the reason I say that is I don't want anyone thinking Miss Vicky is static or stuck at what we're agreeing to. If the if the task at hand, she you know does what the public sees as being um, very good at her job. Every year we come up and we discuss. Hey, you know, let's let's look at this and reward. So I'll leave that right there where it is and let Ms. Vicki take over. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Gaynor. Yes. Mayor, I did agree to this. I, I feel like that um, the state that the city is in now and um, I wanted to, to make sure that um, basically there's so much contention within the city. I didn't want it to be that this would be one of those issues where we would kind of hang our hats and and have to discuss have a long discussion about it so i am i'm I'm fine with this there's an opportunity within a year to come back and and uh, look at um, additional salary but i'm fine with it thank you very much um, is there a motion for approval can I make a motion? Mm -hmm. you can make any motion that you like is there a motion i make Oh, I make a motion with the what he says that we can discuss it. Thank you. Okay, so you're making a motion for the purpose of discussion with yes, me. Thank you. Second. There's been a motion um, and a second for discussion of the contract um, with our city manager Vicky Gaynor. Okay, discussion Ma is open. Mayor, if I may. Yes. Um, first, um, I would I would like to ask the mayor. Um, when we did this once before with the previous city manager, it got pretty awkward. 
and, and I would like to know if the commission would like to consider to offer to let Ms. Gaynor step out of the room while we do this if she wants to. Sure. I don't recall doing that before. No, we didn't. And, and it got okay. awkward dealing with, with Mr. White. Um, at least it was awkward for me, but I want to make sure she's comfortable and, and, and give her the opportunity to step out of the room if she would like to step out. You have that opportunity, Ms. Gaynor, but certainly do not feel that you have to. No, I, I'd rather. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She asked me. Thank you. <laughs> now then, Mayor, if I may continue. Please go ahead. Um, it, it's hard for me to argue this point with, when, when Ms. Gaynor has accepted the price at 115. I will tell you that uh, I think the city is getting a bargain. If you look at um, Panama City Beach paying 170, uh, Mr. McQueen's making 156, I believe, in Panama City. Um, the Callaway City Manager is making 134. Um, she will be the lowest paid city manager in Bay County. Um, That's I think, not true. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no. I, well, if, if I'm incorrect, I apologize. Mr. I, I appreciate you uh, me. Russell, if you wanted to continue, then yes. I'll grab okay. Mr. Aldridge. Um, that being said, you know, I had a long discussion with Ms. Gaynor, and she's okay with this numbers and and so it, it I, it's hard for me to argue that because it's your money that we're spending mm -hmm. so um that being said at a minimum i would like to see us at least pay her that salary from back when she became acting city manager because she's been doing this job since then not since we hired her down yeah. I well, think um, that's what we just did, we're, we're Mr. Oh, all the way back yes. to, Since back days, to yeah. April? Yes. From yes. March. From March. Okay. March I, I, I misunderstood that then. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Aldridge. Yes, and, and that, that's what I was going to get to, Commissioner Russell. I, you know, if you actually add up the back pay with the annual salary, it actually throws her above Callaway, and it gives us a year to figure out where our finances are. Um, let's the dust settle for 12 more months after this storm. That was kind of my mindset behind it. I don't have a personal, I guess I should say, dog in this fight. We're all on the same team again, like I started. Yes. And, um, you know, I want to do what everyone, what everyone is happy with. But I was tasked with laying the groundwork. And, um, you know, I felt personally proud. Um, again, maybe it's my business side. But, you know, you try to keep your numbers low and then let people earn what they you know, when they start getting into big, big, big dollars. And, you know, it's okay that we have differences on and viewpoints on that if we do. Um, but that's just kind of where I was when we when we negotiated these contracts. And I made sure so everyone knows it was, and, and the city attorney can uh, vouch for this, it was an open, frank discussion. It wasn't a one-sided or a here's what we're doing. I, I can't tell you how many times I said, well, you know, Miss Vicky, are you satisfied with this? Are we satisfied? So I, I felt like I did my due diligence. Let, let me put that out there, and I'll, I'll leave it leave it where it is. I would say that I had some very different ideas about the contract. Um, had I been the negotiator, I would have probably approached it differently. But this commission chose um, not to follow tradition and have the mayor to negotiate the contract. So therefore, I'm going to go along with what this commission has um, has pushed forward. But um, I certainly would have gone in a different direction. Mayor, yes. by me? Yes. Okay, I do have a, a couple of things that I want to ask. And uh, uh, the one thing I want to ask is under number 11, it says about education that we will um, foot the bill for that. I want to know how, is there a limit to that? Is there any kind of monetary limit or is, could she go back and get her master's on the city? She actually has a master's degree. Okay. It, 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 this so. references subscription and professional dues. Okay. So there's okay. the city managers association, things like that, or conferences. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly, I don't think that Miss Gaynor would qualify for any um, further personal education, like college uh, ed educations based off Section 11. Okay. Mayor, and, I'm, oh, I'm, I was, uh, Mayor, if I may. I, th I think Commissioner Tender was still asking. Okay, so I'll, I'll come, come back to you. More things. I'm sorry. Um, and just so the public is aware with the 115,000 and the car allowance and all these things all the benefits her actually sat her actual combined salary is over $132,000 a year uh, not to be confused with 115 I also um, and I'm whether I'm in the minority or not it doesn't matter I have to speak how I feel when Miss Gaynor took over on March 9th of last year she was given a 15% 
increase at that point. And to, for me, I don't necessarily agree with going back retro for a year and coming up with another 25,000. That's, that's just my personal thing. And then I only have one more thing to say, and then I'm done. Number 16 in that contract reads, the, employer acknowledge, the employee acknowledges she has had the opportunity to consult with legal counsel of her choosing and has not in any way relied on any representation of employer's attorney. Now, where does that leave us? Because you're talking like that you were in on this. You are, you are our attorney. Correct. I do not represent Ms. Gaynor in the negotiations with the city to establish her contractual terms. I represent the city itself. Ms. Gaynor has, if she so choose, could bring in an attorney or she can do it herself. Okay. But I have, I, there's no contractual obligation between me and Ms. Gaynor. Okay. Only, the only, only reason we have a relationship is because she's employed by the city. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> That's all I have to say. Mayor, Thank you. Uh, um, Commissioner Russell, I believe you had something. I, I was just going to answer the, the first question that she had. Under Section 11, it says that the, the, the amount's annually limited by our budget. So this commission sets the budget on how much she can spend. Thank you, Mayor. Are there other comments or questions about the contract? Yes, Mayor. Go if ahead, may, please, um, Mr. Uh, Commissioner If Parker. we're, we're going to retro um, Ms. Gaynor back to, uh, to, to March, um, and then we're going to put a, an annual review um, I was under the thought that her review should come at maybe a six month point versus a year because well, that would be an actual year. Well, go ahead. Her, her review would come annually prior to the adoption of the budget, which we're getting close. Well, I mean, six months versus eight months, we were close, so we just kept it simple. It'll be annually prior okay. to the adoption so it'll, of the budget. It won't Although actually this be time, a year from won't now, be a, it'll, won't be yeah. exactly 12 months. And, and, and to Clear Commissioner any, Aldridge, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. I'm sorry. To, to clear up any confusion on that, we're not paying like she didn't get paid anything those months. She's just getting paid the difference of what she's making now versus what she made then. So you're right. She got the 15% then. She's not getting another 15%. It's just going to be stacked on top of what she didn't make at that point in time. Does that make sense? An additional 25000 it was well, the city manager's salary that she would have made because she was the acting city manager. But the money she made at the time... We're not going back and saying your hundred thousand. You know, we're going to pay you full hundred thousand back from March. We're going to say, okay, here's what you made those. Let's say March. Mm -hmm. Here's what you would have made under this new agreement. So the difference is X amount of dollars. So it's really like she was making this salary back in March when she was doing this job. It wouldn't. It, she's not making any more or less than she's making now. Does that make sense to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Quite honestly, it does not. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Did I, is there, did, um, yes. Commissioner Parno, did you want to add something? No, I just, I just okay. Had an okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? <laughs> um, is there a motion or are we at that point? We had a motion for We had a motion discussion. for the purpose of discussion, but I don't believe it was a motion for approval. I'll make a motion for approval. I'll second. There's been a motion for um, approval and a second um, of the contract uh, that has been uh, negotiated. Um, Mr. Albritton, could you call the roll, please? Oh, Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? No. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so the motion carries. Um, moving on, to, uh, congratulations, um, our city manager, uh, Ms. Gaynor. Um, not only are you the city manager, but you actually have a contract now. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Thanks. Yeah, there you are. Um, we look forward to a, a long relationship. Um, Yes. There was no public commentary. That would be the mayor's fault. Um, Ms. Ms. Walker, would you like to say something? I'm sorry. Was there anyone else in the public who would like to say something? Because I'll be, I can go back retroactively and do that. I do apologize. It's an oversight. It's been a very long meeting. Is that it? Okay. Moving on to item number um, 19. Nope, 20. that's it. Thank you. Stand corrected. Item number 20. Um, this is the approval of the special auditing contract for the company um, Plant Moron. Um, the city manager has this report. Ms. Gaynor? Yes, ma'am. 
Um, Mayor, on November 22nd, we did do a bid and we opened and Plant Moran um, was the special auditing firm. Um, we brought it to the city commission. City commission approved that firm and then asked me to bring back the contract with the verbiage that we actually put into the RFP. That contract is before us along with the task order. Um, I did speak with Plant Moran and as you can see in their original proposal, they only, they proposed doing this entire uh, audit for about $20,000. And then uh, we went back and they did a task order that uh, they they can actually do this for 20000 but not to exceed 50000 And we have $100,000 in the budget. Thank you. Um, is there a motion for this item? So moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Um, is there any discussion from the commission or questions from the commission? Yes, ma'am. Go ma ahead, Commissioner Russell. I had several citizens come to me, well not several, I had a few come to me that did not want us to do this. They felt like that the FBI was going to take care of this and um, would resolve this issue for us. My answer to them was this, um, there's no guarantee the FBI is going to share their findings with us. You know, if, if, if they plead out, there's no trial, there's no discovery, there's no evidence then the commission is still left here wondering what happened. That's the reason I'm supporting this. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you. And um, I had um, one comment that I wanted to make as well, and, and um, it's item number 15 of the contract, the work product. The client shall have unrestricted right to the use uh, of the documents, analyses, and the others prepared by the contractor and so forth. Um, and this is in no way um, to diminish um, our city manager, but I would like, um, once these findings are found, should we decide to go forward, that the client would be the commission and the city manager and that we would all be informed separately and at the same time of these findings um, because the commission is really uh, the client of this looking um, to see um, what has um, occurred, if anything. So um, not to diminish our city manager at all, but I would just like for the commission to have uh, at the exact same time that the email or the findings are sent to the city manager, I'd like for the commissioners to receive the same. So I would like to have that caveat if that's possible in the contract. Easy enough, Mayor. I can make that change, assuming it's approved by the commission. If the rest of the commission agrees with it. Um, any feedback? Mayor, I'll amend my motion to include that. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, there is a second. Okay, thank you. And, and also, um, I did have one other comment. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be the talkative one on this one. But um, I do agree that there is um, a lot of auditing that's taking place um, with the city right now. Um, but I... Uh, have felt bound from the beginning um, when Commissioner Tinder first brought this up because for those of you who were here when I became mayor in 2015, I asked for an audit at the time I became mayor and I asked for it several times um, over and over because I wanted a clean slate as the mayor of the city with a clean financial um, record and I was voted down time after time after time and so therefore I did feel obligated even though this FBI investigation and the other auditing is going on I did feel ob obligated to stand by what I had originally said so that's why I'm voting yes excuse me I just said I was going to vote yes that's why I'm in support of this <laughs> um, do I need to do anything else to cure that comment I just made no ma thank you mayor if I may go ahead Commissioner this, Perno. this this will not exceed fifty thousand dollars <laughs> Uh, Commissioner, uh, the initial, Mr. Initial, Albritton, sorry, I just promoted you to the initial or, demoted, or demoted, whichever. The initial task order uh, is an anticipated price of 20000 but not to exceed 50000 uh, One of those thought processes behind it is you just didn't want to give them a blank checkbook with 100000 because typically if you do that, they're going to do enough work to accomplish that. So. Uh, assuming that you know if they come back and the commission wants them to look at a certain avenue uh, that they bring up, then there's going to be an additional fifty thousand that was uh, set aside for this based off the commission's prior uh, dictation to this matter. So this will not exceed fifty thousand before coming back to this commission. That's according to the task order and agreement that hopefully will be signed, assuming the commission approves this. Yes. And Commissioner Perno, not to chastise you at all, but would you please try to speak more into the microphone so the public can hear you? Thank you so much. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Any from the public? Yes, Mr. Walker. I can do this from here. You have to do it from here, sir, so the people listening at home can hear. I apologize. If I remember correctly, is this the forensic audit? Yes, it is. How come we dropped the word forensic out of this one? 
Um, I'll defer to the attorney on why that word is not used. We've been using special auditing services throughout uh, the last few agenda items that has been discussed. Uh, I, it is a, it's not the yearly auditing, it's a special auditing request. Could you clarify for Mr. Walker that the words would be interchangeable for the purpose of this commission, what we're doing, or would they not? I think the scope is the same one way or the Thank other. Thank you. Okay. As long as the scope is the same. Um, and I, I tried to listen to what you said in the monetary sections of it. The original forensic was a cap of $100,000. That's correct. I, I'm, I just want to hear that. And what we're starting off with is twenty. And it can go to 50, and if we find anything else, then we agree and move on. Is that correct? In the forensic, forensic or special? Yes, yes sir. That is, um, that is I believe that is correct. And if I could just state it in my own words just to make sure. I, I think you said it that way, and I, maybe I the, the task it. order that the is, just is the same. The t task mm -hmm. order uh, that would potentially be issued to this firm uh, would be to perform under um, the scope of labor as issued in the RFP. Uh, for an amount um, no less than twenty thousand, but not to exceed fifty thousand, uh, and then they was presumably bring some report back. I will leave that to them. They're the mm -hmm. experts, and if there are uh, other items that the commission would like them to review, then we have an additional fifty thousand right. dollars, or whatever the difference is budgeted. That's, that's Question answered. Thank good. you. Okay. Is there any other discussion from the board? Any other discussion from the public? Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll for approval? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Commissioner Perno? No. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So the special auditing contract with Plant Moran is um, approved with that caveat of, of uh, the client. And I'll get the change Thank back. You. Item number 21. Um, discussion and possible award of the RFQ number 18 slash 19 dash 4B for the city's annual auditing services to James Moore certified public accountants. Um, Ms. Gaynor. Mary, as you, as the commissioner, we put this out to bid several times and um, we did get some bids back. Uh, we had one from Tallahassee and then we had another um, firm that was going to apply for this but uh, decided not to uh, infer about the, the special audit. And uh, so after doing some checking, we did do a little bit of background and called a couple of his references. Um, our recommendation is that we go with this uh, with James Moore um, so that the city can get an audit done. We need to get started right away. Is there a motion? Mayor, I make a motion that the commission accepts this uh, audit for one year with the option of a second year. A second. There's been a motion and a second. Are there any uh, questions or discussion? There appear to be none. Any from the public? Um, yes, Mr. Uh, Yunt. Brad Yunt, 210 Lakeview Terrace. My question is, what is the term of the engagement? Are we getting a comparison of financial ratios are we getting a review of our accounting systems and our controls? You know, is that included in yes, the sir. engagement letter or yes, is sir. it not included as it wasn't included in years past? All of that information will be included in the engagement letter. We couldn't move forward until the commission approved this. Are there other questions from the public? <clears throat> There appear to be none. Um, Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So it stands approved. Moving to item number 22. Discussion and possible award of RFQ number HM19-20-2 to the top three architect design teams, DAG Architects, Florida Architects, and Mott McDonald for the city's design and rebuild, giving the city manager authority to move forward with negotiations and contracts. Ms. Gaynor? Mayor, yes, we did have a bid opening. We had a, we had over ten. Well, we had ten firms to um, submit for the design and uh, architecture design of the city buildings. Um, we had a committee of four that reviewed all of those books. And most of those books were probably about 
you know, probably 200 pages. And so it took us a while to get through those. And um, we are recommending these top three firms. Uh, one of the reasons we are recommending top three firms is because these are, this is a massive project. It's just not one building, it's several buildings. Um, it will take a, a, a very long time. And we, we did see the committee did say that they saw um, some strengths in each of these firms to be able to do some of these projects. So we're hoping that we will be able to go into negotiations, um, find the strengths of each firm and their partner, and um, bring that back before the commission. Thank you. Um, is there a motion to go forward with this um, award? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there dis discussion or questions from the board? Um, I did have one uh, comment that I wanted to make, and I did discuss this at length with uh, Ms. Gaynor, and that is as we go forward with these contracts that um, similar to what we did um, four years ago when I first became mayor and we were talking about parks and other parts of the city, that we would have at length public discussion about these buildings and what we want them to look like and what we want them to represent and the design and the size and the expense that this will not just be something that's decided in-house and suddenly you see a new building pop up and that's not going to happen so that that was my concern um, and again no no yeah, <laughs> diminishing of the city manager yeah, but I just know that this is a very sensitive issue we're basically rebuilding our town every single municipal building and, the, and everyone needs to have a voice in that so I just want to make sure that happens those are my concerns. Any other discussion from the commission? Any from the public? Ms. Gaynor? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Mary Anderson? Yes. This is a, that's a great thing to have accomplished, everybody. I yes. feel good about this one. <laughs> Number 23, first reading of ordinance number 1088, a fire pension ordinance amendment. Um, Chief Delange, did you have a comment that you wanted to make on this? It's, this is a no action necessary, but before we do the reading of the ordinance. It's basically to bring our pension in line with the uh, state policies with the cancer prevention. Uh, there is no impact to the plan. It's just something we've got to do. Typically, we call it general house. Thank you very much. And I'll ask Ms. Gaynor at this time to read the ordinance with no action necessary from the commission. Ordinance number 1088, an ordinance of the city of Lynn Haven, Florida, amending chapter 50, personnel, article 4, firefighters retirement system of the code of ordinances of the city of Lynn Haven, amending the firefighters retirement system system to implement the conclusive firefighter cancer presumption established by section 112.1816 Florida statutes and rebuttable disease uh, presumption under sections 112.18.12, uh, excuse me, 112.181 and 175.231 Florida statutes, creating section 5127D of the city code relating to pre and retirement death benefits, amending section 50-128B of the city code relating to the line of duty disability benefits, providing for inclusion in the code, providing for severability, providing for a repeller, and prov providing for an effective date. Thank you. And so that is the first reading and no action is required. And so we will move on to item number 24 which is discussion of ordinance number 1071, deciding whether to extend the current ordinance for six months relating to the code of the city of Lynn Haven temporary uses and structures. And we're making you work hard, Ms. Gaynor, I'm sorry. <laughs> absolutely fine. Mayor, this is an ordinance that I, I gladly bring I think that the citizens of Lynn Haven and Bay County are still recovering. We did pass an ordinance back in uh, January giving residents 18 months to live within um, their um, uh, structures or vehicles or recreation vehicles um, with the option to extend another six months. And I think from talking to so many residents and I have spoken to so many of them, they are still in the rebuild process. I spoke to one other day. They had not even poured their foundation. Many have not gotten started. And I think that they're going to need this extension, uh, which will take us, I think, into February of 2021. Yes. Is there um, a motion? So moved. Second. 
There's been a motion and a second um, to extend uh, this ordinance. And um, is there any discussion from the commission? Any from the public? Uh, go ahead. I would just like to say that you have to come up, Mom. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, over a year, and I'm still fighting. I can't oh, get up I'm sorry, just speak. <laughs> I'm sorry. They're still working on my house for over a year, and it's still not finished. And so I can certainly understand and agree that they need extra time. Yes. Thank you. I still believe they're going to get mine done. They will. <laughs> they will. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Thank you, um, Miss Gaynor. Would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell. Yes. Commissioner Tender. Yes. Commissioner Parno. Yes. Commissioner Aldridge. Yes. Mayor Anderson. Yes. Um, moving on to uh, item number 25. This is discussion and possible approval of an access easement in the city of Lynn Haven. This is Panhandle Engineering. Mr. Forehand, do you have a report? Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. I'm Good Chris evening. Forehand with Panhandle Engineering. Um, I have, um, well, let, me, well, let me just start and give you a little background. As you know, a few meetings ago, you had uh, this maintenance uh, access agreement uh, on your agenda and you tabled that agenda item and you asked uh, Ms. Gaynor and I to go and meet with the merits. And so we did that. Uh, there's been a lot of, there's been several meetings, um, several discussions, several emails. And so I thought it was um, good that we go back and document that and give you a little bit of history um, based on what is, you know, where this started and where we got to where we are or how we got to where we are. Um, so I've provided all of you a letter that outlines um, all of the things that uh, we've discussed with the merits, um, all of his concerns, and we've, we've uh, it also says in the letter that we have tried to accommodate uh, some of Mr. Merritt's concerns, not all of them. Um, we did, we were able to move, or get Gulf Power to move a power pole. Uh, we were able to shift uh, Colorado over slightly uh, away from his fence. Um, we did discuss um, placing some signage on Colorado uh, that would limit some of the larger delivery trucks and vehicles. Um, we discussed uh, having the police officers, um, you know, look at some of the speeding issues. Um, so those are some things we've done. Um, I know there's some of his concerns are with the roundabout. I don't know what else we really could have done with the roundabout uh, other than the way that it's designed now. Um, with the stormwater crossing, we did address that. That is a that is a maintenance operation. Um, the the only other issue, I guess, would be um, they talked about possibility of closing Colorado. Uh, things that you have to consider with that is if we're going to close it, we strongly suggest having some way for your garbage trucks, your emergency vehicles, fire trucks to be able to turn around, and so um, you know some sort of a cul-de-sac or something or a hammerhead. Um, so you would need property to do that, which you don't have. Uh, it's very limited. Uh, it's kind of a, you know, it's a, it's a, what we call a rough area in survey terms. They didn't do a very good job when they, when they originally planned it. And so we were, we're trying to clean that up. Uh, and that's what this maintenance claim will do. It'll clean that up. Uh, one thing I did talk to uh, Mr. Merritt about the last time we met was um, if we, if we're able to shift the road over and you decide to, um, to leave Colorado open um, that I think it would be fine for him to leave his fence in place where it is now. And I think that's one of his major issues. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Are there questions from the commission? Oh, yes, I have a couple. Go ahead, Ms. Tinder. Excuse um, me, Commissioner Tinder. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you, uh, what is your personal opinion about closing this? I have talked to a few residents and they would like to see it closed because it totally negates the um, security of that community being, you know, possibly gated community or they just feel unsecure now that people can just go down the back way and, and all of that. I mean, and, and I'm going to give you a double thing here. Not just that, but um, what you talked about a call sack for the garbage pickup and things, couldn't that just simply be uh, carved out right there where the golf cart barn used to be? That's a huge empty lot. Well, there's, there's a couple questions and comments okay. you have there. Um, and I'll address the first <laughs> one. Um, you mentioned the country club. You know, the country club used to be private. Yes. And I can't remember the year, but uh, back in when John Lynch was the city manager, they uh, the city took the country club roads back over and they became public 
and then they paved them. So they're now they're public streets. Uh, so it's not it's not a you know a private community. Private. It's a private club, I guess per se. They do have an HOA, um, but in terms of the access, you know, it does provide an emergency access. Um, should there be some issue, you know, with the, with the entrance, um, the land development code does require on any new subdivisions that you have two access points. So mm -hmm. now that is for that is for new ones. Um, yes, we do have some streets in the city that are dead ends. Uh, I know on Iowa, we are um, repaving that road and we're going to try to put a small cul-de-sac at the end of it. Uh, Mississippi, we haven't looked at that one because we we, mm -hmm. um, we actually paved it, but we didn't do anything with the end of it because there's less homes on that one. So um, in terms of being able to turn around at the end, if you closed it, you know, that where the cart barns were, that's private property. So you would have to acquire property from um, the country club. To They're the owner of that property? Correct. And the cart barns are gone. They were damaged in the storm, but, you know, they own the property. Thank you. Are there other questions from the commission? Is there a motion? Would, would it, I'm sorry, Ms. Commissioner Conner, please I, go ahead. Uh, would it be possible to just gate it at the end and then uh, city city could access the gate as coming and going you could do that but you still need a place for you for you know your emergency vehicles and garbage trucks to turn around or we recommend you do that well they could use the gate when 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 necessary they could are there other questions from the commission i i mine's not a question it is just a statement okay i've talked to a good number of the people who live down there and they all seem to be leaning and i've not had one say no that they didn't agree with it, that they're all leaning towards that. Um, they're all leaning toward? They're all leaning towards they want that to be either like what Commissioner Perno said, block it off with the, it, you know, so that emergency equipment or whatever, but they're not going to hop out of a fire truck and go open a gate, I don't think necessarily. But at the same time, um, they're racing down there now. You know, they're racing down there now with... Um, the kids and not maybe not just kids i don't know but i mean like mrs Tran said the safety of her kids is is uh has been a question with how they race down through there are there other comments or questions from the commission and i'll get to the public in just a moment Mayor, I'd, I'd just like to point out um my, my my parents were a member of the country club in the 90s and i used that road in the 90s to go to the country club i mean it was a dirt road but but anybody that knew you went down that road to keep from going through the gate you know so that road's been there whether it's been dirt paved or whatever it's been there for as long as i can remember i didn't grow up in Lindhaven, and I, I mean i remember back then um i mean i just wanted to point out this isn't a new problem this it's the road has been there and has been used for years miss gannon did you have a comment you like to make? yes mayor i i just want to reiterate some of the things that we have talked about and that we are doing um colorado is going to be paid and once it's paved, we are going to put some speed bumps there. So that's going to slow that down. We are going to put a sign that will restrict um, cars larger than four, four axle, axles from coming through there. We are going to meet with our, um, uh, uh, excuse me, our advisory committee, excuse me, traffic advisory committee, and making sure that we have a police uh, station there. Those are all things that will deter that. Uh, it has not, it's been my recommendation, and I still stand on this recommendation, that we do not close this road. I have talked with um, our fire and police, and that is not something that they think is feasible or should be done. And I am concerned about the safety in that area. I think that if we do all of those things, the the problems or concerns that we feel like are there, I think we can we can keep that road open and um, have an access for, for both neighbors and be neighborly. Are there other comments from the commission? Thank you, Mr. Forehand. You. Now, um, I would like to open this then to the public. Are there uh, those who would like to comment? Yes, Mr. Merritt, go ahead. Thank you. Ron Merritt, uh, 414 Colorado. And first, I'd like to thank 
uh, city manager and even uh, Chris Forehand and, and all the everybody's been very cooperative in trying to help us solve this. Appreciate you taking time to drive down there, and Ms. Tender also went down there as well. If you guys haven't seen it, it's oh, nice I, to see. We all know about it, and everybody who lived in Lynn Haven for some time has driven down the high-speed bypass to Country Club Drive. And yes, it was a dirt road, and it over time went from one side of the telephone pole to the other side. The telephone pole is people parked their golf carts and eventually drove through our yard. I understand the state statutes on taking an easement. Uh, and what I'm hoping is first, you know, there are options to close the road. I know that it's not the preferred option, but there are, we just went through this, hammerheads, tees, many ways to do this. And I might point out that while it would take buying property from the country club to make a cul-de-sac, the city does not own that connecting piece of road there. That's owned by Dr. Tran, and you have an easement on it. The curve, that little piece there, is our property. And as of, as of right this minute, you don't have an easement on it either. That's, that's kind of no man's land. But, uh, so if you could put a T there, you don't have to do anything but put a sign up that says no through traffic, first stop. Then enforce it. Hey, you don't live here, don't go through there. You can put up forangible ballers, those little things you see on the highway, 77, if you want to turn into uh, Chick-fil-A or you want to turn into Walgreens, there's those little things there. Fire trucks drive right over those things if they need to, right? He'll drive over anything. You <laughs> That's right. Okay, so he'll drive over anything, so don't be in his way. But the, and, and same thing with trash trucks, etc. So there are many ways to solve this by closing the road to through traffic. And certainly, you know, new development, yeah, you need another exit. Another, but they plan, develop, and build the country club with that gated area. So if it is a decision that everybody needs this connection, this is an important piece of transportation infrastructure, so be it. Two things. One, purchase the land. Don't use a trans land. Buy the land. You have to buy a cul-de-sac, buy his property from him and use that. If you need a corner of our property and make that curve, so be it. But before you take this easement on a drawing, wait till Chris and those guys have actually pushed the road over. And if you need a corner of our property, so be it. That's fine. But until then, until you get that design with the, with the telephone pole moved over, the uh, Fire hydrant, by the way, thank you for the new fire hydrant, uh, moved over. Now, why do that? Why take our property if you don't have to? Uh, you own land. You've all seen the packages. You've seen where the city's footprint is. You're not on your footprint. You're, you're in my yard. <laughs> you don't have to. 2020, we can look back, shift over just a hair. Pump the brakes. We're happy to work with the city engineers. We're happy to work with everybody. But the, everybody in the street, and they all went home except for DW, uh, We'd really like to close it to through traffic for a lot of reasons. If we can see a way to do that, great. If it's important not to do that, let's just do it right. Thank you so much. And um, is, is there anyone else from the Colorado area who would like to speak? Am I, I'm assuming that Mr. Merritt is speaking all of your concerns. Does anyone have a different concern? Go ahead, sir. Yeah, my name is uh, D.W. Smith. I own the property at uh, 504 Colorado, and also I live on uh, Country Club Court, so I uh, on both sides of the of the road, okay, on Colorado, on the rear entrance. I'm also a member of the board of directors at Panama Country Club, and and the homeowners association also. So there is a history there of having a private community. It was turned over from the homeowners association probably 20 years ago, <coughs> uh, just to keep the roads. But that's the road around the the, the circle. It was not Colorado. Okay, Colorado was not deeded to, to the city, and the traffic is horrendous here. And both sides, I have grandchildren and pets, and just echoing all the, the comments of the people there, it is a safety issue, and we need to do something about it, and we can do it now. We just put some ballots up, close it. Please, please close it, okay? Thank you. It, it's private property. No, we still have property rights in America. Thank you. Anyone else? Further discussion from the commission? Um, I, I have, we had a motion for discussion or do we have a motion for approval? I forgot it, um, what, what they said. I'm sorry, it's been a long discussion. Mayor, I don't believe we have a motion on the we floor. We didn't have a motion Mayor, at all. We, we had a no, discussion from Mr. Forehand, thank you. Is there a motion? Thank Mayor, you. Mayor, yes. I'd like to make a motion that um, we do what Mr. Merritt's recommending. Let's just pull up the brakes a little bit give Mr. Forehand and Panhandle Engineering the opportunity to set where the street is actually going to be. And um, 
address. Personally, I'd like to speak to every single person who lives on that street. I've spoken to about five of those families myself, but I would like to investigate closing that a little bit closer and just giving it some real heartfelt um, due diligence rather than this is a big issue. So is your motion to table this? Is that what you're asking for? Sure. That, yeah, that works. Okay. That works. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. I'll, okay. There is a, a motion um, to um, explore and listen more carefully instead of making a quick decision, I think is what Commissioner Tender was voicing, and Commissioner Aldridge has uh, seconded. So um, progress is sometimes slow, but progress is sometimes um, better when it's slow. Okay. So is there um, any other discussion? Yes, I'm Yes, Commissioner Russell. I'll, I'll be quick. I was just going to say. I, I, Commissioner Russell was first. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Mr. S uh, Mr. Smith, um, you say you're a member of the HOA or you're a member of the Country Club? Both. Okay. I'm not on the board of the HOA. I'm on the board of the Country Club. Oh, okay. Okay. I was going to ask you uh, as a member of the HOA. I'm uh, just curious enough. That, uh, well, no, the Country Club. Would the Country Club be interested in selling part of that property where the cart shack was so that we could move the road? If the if the city deemed that they didn't weren't going to close it, you know. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, it's just a no, thought. There's not a possibility. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm so I, I'm personally so inclined that that I don't think closing the road is good for the subdivision. It may be good for the people in Colorado, but I think it's bad for the people that live in the country club. I lived there for years, all with the one, one road and only one of the people that sneak by on Colorado and wasn't supposed to be a third. Now, that was you speaking like that. <laughs> oh, no, my mom, my mom, my mom. Okay. No, we were actually if we can, club, um, we if we can go back to Robert's Rules of Order so that we're following our charter, um, <laughs> we're sort of talking back and forth, which is okay. This has been very informal, and I think it's been very good. So are there any other discussion, um, comments from the public? Anybody else? Anybody else? We've had a motion that we table this. We've had a second. Is there any discussion from the yeah. commission? Yes, Mayor. All, all I was going to say was okay. I, I agree with um, with you guys that, that there are still property owner rights in the United States of America, and I am about as conservative as it gets. So I, let's try to work this out. I agree. There's no need in rushing through this thing. Um, well, I won't go there anyway, but thank you. Okay. So anything else? Yes, Mayor. I just I did want to ask Chris to elaborate on whether or not this would slow down the process of the paving paving on Colorado. I don't, I don't think it will. But we still have to um, install a force main out on Eighth Street mm -hmm. um, that affects the roundabout construction, mm -hmm. and they're not going to do any paving until they do that. And then we also have that crossing to build, so that'll take a few weeks to get that done. So give so us a little time. time. We do. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Thank you, Mr. Forehand. I'm sorry. Okay. Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so we will be spending a little more time um, looking at this and trying to find some solutions that make everyone happy. And um, we'll move on to um, item number 26, which is discussion regarding formation of an employee grievance committee. Uh, Commissioner Tenders, this is your item. Go ahead. Thank you. Yes. Um, I brought this to the uh, commission, of course, because we can't discuss it behind, you know, closed doors. So here we are. Um, I would like to propose, at the very least, having a workshop, public workshop, whatever you want to do to uh, look into having a grievance committee for Lynn Haven city employees. Now, there are sheets in, in our 171 page handbook that um, address grievances. However, we have situations where you can't just go to your immediate supervisor, the immediate uh, director, and then our things basically say now you go to your director and if you're not happy with those results, then you go on up the board to the city manager. Um, and that all sounds great. And the reason I bring this up is because recently we um, lost our deputy finance director and she had nowhere to go because she reported directly to the city manager. So I feel like we have to have something in line for those directors who run into a problem. Who are they to go to? Who are they supposed to go to? I mean, 
we're it at that point. And I just feel like, um, but it needs to be done more formally. Um, I did receive a call from uh, Beverly Waldrop, and we went over everything that she told me, and it's, you know, she said, she said, that kind of thing. I'm not going to say who's, who's telling the truth and who's not telling the truth, but I do feel that our directors at that level have to have somewhere to go. They just have to have somewhere to go. Or we're just going to be going lawsuit after lawsuit when this happens. Um, is there, um, would you like to put that in a motion? Or uh, Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we um, have a meeting to discuss this or a workshop, whatever you are comfortable with, to see if you know we come up with a plan. I don't think it's just a matter of somebody coming to one commissioner. That's not going to help anything. I think we have to have a, gr a group set up, you know, whether it's the person that's leaving can select one person, city manager can select one person, however, however, but I think it needs to be discussed and we need to come up with a solution to the problem. Is there a second to Commissioner Tinder's motion for the sake of discussion? Okay, all I have to say, if I can speak, yes. okay, I'm just going to say it publicly so it's out there. When we start getting sued for hundreds of thousands of dollars for threatening employees and things of this nature, it's not coming out of our pockets, it's coming out of mine, it's coming out of these people's pockets, it's coming out of all of the Lynn Haven residents' pockets, because we, as a group, do not want to form a grievance committee to represent and stand behind our employees, or at least give them the, the fair, uh, a fair way of distributing their information and getting feedback. That's all I have to say. Um, I, I would like to pass my gavel over to Mayor Pro Tem Russell just for a moment so that I could um, have the liberty of seconding um, Commissioner Tender's motion just for the sake of being able to discuss this. Um, so. That's what I'm doing. Um, and with that second, um, there's a couple of things that I, and, and I, and please feel free to jump in, Mr. Albritton, if you think I've said something incorrectly, but I think I'm correct. Um, having been mayor for about four years, I have had employees come and talk to me confidentially, um, and I've never, ever, ever told. They'll tell you that I haven't. They've come to talk to me about some of their concerns, um, not necessarily grievances, but I would, um, there's, there's kind of a double-edged sword because we have a city manager form of government and we've given a city manager our trust to be in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of the city, to be over the operations of the employees, and that the department heads would answer to her or him, and that the um, employees would answer to their individual department heads or directors, and there is a, um, a chain of command. And so the commission, our job is policy. That's, that's all our job is. And as much as I feel sympathy and empathy, because I worked, for a, I worked for the Bay County School Board District for a long, long time, many, many years. And as a teacher, you go to a principal, you expect to find justice there, but many times the principal is handpicked by the superintendent and the principal is going to be held up by the superintendent. I'm, just, I'm not calling names here, I'm just talking over the course of many years, many superintendents, many principals. So anytime you're in a government agency, a little different than a, a private corporation and the way this city is run we have to place confidence in our city manager to oversee the daily day the day-to-day -day operations of the city I do hear what Commissioner Tinder is saying and I agree with her that employees have to have some place to go especially if the city manager is is the only place they have to go because of the fact they're a director not this city manager in particular any city manager so what I would like to say, uh, having seconded this, and I invite any other discussion that would like to come, because of the way our charter is written with a city manager form of government, I believe that we are infringing on those duties we've given to the city manager if we as a commission involve ourselves in the day-to-day -day operations of the city with the employees. On the other hand, as mayor, and I think I could speak for every other commissioner here, we had a terrible situation with, a, with, with 
not with more than one former city manager from what I understand, as far as employees. And I want to say as mayor, I have never ever spoken a word when someone's come to me in confidence. If you can't speak to us as a group, but if you're an employee and you feel that you have been infringed upon in some way, and you have a commissioner or the mayor that you feel comfortable to speak with or to talk with, then you could certainly do that. And if enough calls are made, eventually one of the commissioners or the mayor is going to speak up at a meeting and what the commission does have power over is who the city manager is. And, and the, the commission does have the power to discipline that city manager or clerk if we feel that employees are being mistreated. So Commissioner Tinder, with all due respect, I would say that for us to form a, an employee grievance committee, you're involving you know, a commissioner, one commissioner, which one would it be? I, I personally don't see that we could do that, but I do think that we need to put an open invitation out to our employees here in the city that if your only person to answer to is the city manager, and you truly feel that whoever that city manager is has done an egregious uh, uh, act or has treated you in some way that's unfair, then we are your only place to reach. So please reach and do it with confidence. And that's all I would have to say. I don't know if anyone else wants to comment. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Um, and I would I would like to say that I, I completely concur with your, uh, your your statements. Does any other commissioner have anything they'd like to offer? No. Um, just. Uh, for my own um, information for y'all, um, we have a policy in place for personal problems, we, we, grievances. Um, the one issue that you said is, to me is an isolated issue. Just like I talked about with land use, unless you give me a significant reason why we change policy, I'm not for changing things. So with one person's issue, I mean, unless you've got others that you can come to and say, all right, this person's had an issue, if it's one isolated issue, then I, I personally can't support it. That being said, um, does any other commissioner want to say anything before I open it to public uh, comment? I'd like to say something. Sure. I have had other people. I have had other employees. And I won't ever speak their names either. I'm, I feel just like the mayor does. It's in strictest confidence, and I'm not going to do that. I'd rather do it, create something that can be helpful to our employees so that they don't... Um, go complaining to everybody and i don't mean everybody literally um but i hear complaints about all kinds of crazy stuff and when i say to them why don't you go to your supervisor they go because i don't want to lose my job i go they're not going to fire you for complaining oh yes they are and i hear chuckles in the background so and and they and it's written in a way that says oh there cannot be any retribution they can't be but six months down the road Keep your eyes open. You know, I mean, that's what they're telling me they feel. I'm not making that up. But uh, so with that said, I just I just wanted to concur with you. I, I don't give up anybody's name, and I never will. Anyone so, else? Yeah, um, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, not, I don't have the gavel. I'm sorry. Uh, public comment? Yes, sir. Not to protract the evening any further, but <laughs> uh, I grew up in the Air Force, and we had a the IG system. Uh, so if someone had a complaint, there was a, a, a route. Sometimes the problem is the commander. Sometimes it's the commander's commander, or it's a system. Uh, so it's always good to have some other avenue to exercise if you have a problem. Uh, do accident investigations for the Air Force and for the NTSB. Sometimes the problem with an aircraft accident is leadership, not necessarily the pilot. Although it is difficult, and without some privilege, some way to do this to the side of the organization, it's hard to find the right answers. That said, I understand all the other nitinoid issues here. What do other communities do? What do they do in Panama City? Do they have a grievance committee? Does a beach have one? I don't know. No one else does. <laughs> the beach is civil service, so they're a little different. Mr. Walker. You're all right. <laughs> However, we know that Mrs. Tinder is correct. The fear in this city is and always has been you will be fired. You presently do not have any directors on the organization. They were all removed by number one was Lynch, 
Number two was Mr. White. So who does they have to go to? They're all gone. For three days, this town, this city, was run by the sub, not, not appointed, not elected officials of this town. We didn't have any directors. We didn't have any deputies. You were deputy, excuse me, I'm pointing to you, but the city manager was the deputy clerk. There was no deputy city manager. Years ago, there was. That person and all those directors fell in bad repute with the city manager. He removed them. So who do the employees have to go to? One person, the city manager. If that city manager didn't like you, you're guaranteed to lose your job. And they did. In, any other public discussion? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, I'm short. Um, just a comment. Judy is just saying she wants a workshop to discuss it. So why can't you just at least have the workshop? I'm kind of disappointed you guys aren't uh, voting for at least a conversation to happen. Even if you keep the same system in place, at least you're discussing it. Thank you. Uh, any other public discussion? Ms. Walker? Walk 1106 Michigan Avenue. Um, I know my husband and I would very much appreciate your having a grievance committee because very often people are coming to us because they know we come to the city meetings and speak. So it would assist our lives if there was one. To me, if your employees are happy in their work, they're going to show it to their customers, us, taxpayers that come in and that their life is going to be better, making our lives better. I, I really think that there should be some type of situation where they can come and you don't want to, um, and I hate to use the word complain, but put forth their thoughts about what they might think is wrong with their situation. Commissioner Russell, may I speak? Yes, ma'am. Um, I did second Commissioner Tender's motion, and so I would like to get Mr. Albritton's input on whether or not our charter even has provision for something like that because of the fact we give the city manager the control of the day-to-day -day operations of the city and if you think that it's a gray area then I've, I've seconded the motion and we could call you know basic or Mr. Russell could call Commissioner Russell could call for a vote for a workshop since I've seconded the motion but your thoughts on what I said before, that I believe the commission is a policy-making body and not able to function as a grievance committee, and who would the grievance committee be, and that kind of thing. So. Mayor, I think the concepts that uh, you literated are correct, but I wouldn't go as far as to say it would be impossible to set up some committee. Anything's possible, and exactly the, the route that would be best from a legal perspective, I could not answer for you right now. And so, but it would create an issue based off the city manager. Your the issues you proposed are legitimate issues. I'm just not prepared to say legally that it's impossible to uh, create a grievance committee. Um, although the city manager is clearly based off our charter, uh, the person that uh, is in charge of that's where the buck stops. Commissioner Russell, may I ask one more question? Please? Yes, ma'am. If Commissioner Tender were to revise or just maybe ask a question of the rest of the commission in a motion form that you would explore the possibility of maybe what other cities have done and how this commission might consider approaching a workshop, could she amend her motion to something of that nature and you would be willing to explore and, and look at that? I think she certainly can, but we've got a motion and second on the floor, so I think we need to get through that motion and second okay. first, and um, if there's any other matter, then that could be readdressed. Mr. Albert, if, if, if I could get some clarification. The motion was for a workshop. The second was for discussion. Does the second have to be amended to remove the discussion? or No, sure. The second was to second, second Commissioner Tender's motion. Okay. And Commissioner Russell, could I, could I speak for one second about this as well? Yes, Commissioner one second. Aldridge. You know, my, my thought is it's not what's fair. Uh, my thought is if we went through with this, is there any teeth to it whatsoever? Uh, is there, I mean, you know what I mean? I, so we put together a grievance board when someone gets fired. They go to the grievance board. 
the grievance board takes it to the political people and it turns into a political show up here of everyone fighting for who they like or whatnot. I agree. I think we need to keep this centralized like our charter states. We need to go with what we've gone with for a hundred years. Um, and, you know, I mean, again, what are we going to do? Have a quasi judicial trial every time someone has a grievance and we're going to have, you know, them saying their side and then there'll be the defense, which is the city. And then I guess the commissioners will sit in and decide who's telling the truth. And to me, that is a big ball of yarn to come undone real quick. So I'll leave that right there. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. Com Commissioner. Yes. Yes. Please. Can I speak? Um, I find it disturbing that we sit here and talk about how we go forward with our personnel when we have put so much energy into um, making sure that their morale is high. Um, then I have commissioners that complain when I spend money to try to make their morale high. Um, and so you got to find that balance. Uh, I have commissioners complain saying they don't do their jobs. Um, so do something about it. So we've got to find that balance. And we've got to allow the city manager to do his or her, her job. And I think it is uh, unfortunate that uh, the deputy finance director uh, is gone. But the, the, the problem being you put me here and you ask me to have people in place that could run this, that could uh, run the city, that would be error free, that would give you accurate information, that would know the finances of the city so that we can be transparent. That was not happening. So the city or the commission can decide if they want mediocre or they want the best person in a job. And that's where I am. But I think it's unfair for any city manager to sit in a position and have to um, decide whether or not I make a commissioner happy by keeping someone on when they don't do their jobs correctly. Mayor, Mayor. Pro Temp, may I speak? Yes, Okay, I didn't want to go here. I did not want to go here. But this issue is not about whether, for you, it's about whether she did her job. I, I, and that's fine. Like I said, I think you all been gunning for her for a long time, and I've seen proof of that. But I will say this. The way it was handled out in the parking lot was totally, you threatened her. That is an untrue statement. And that's between you and God's ears and the, and the courts, I guess. So uh, that's all I'm going to say. Ma order. Mayor, that is an untrue statement. And I would like, I, I, I just like for the HR director to come forward and um, um, give that information that she's already taken um, a statement from that person. Okay. Please do that. Okay, let's, let's, let's. Do I have to? <laughs> it's open investigation. I really can't comment on it. Last comment, and then, and then I'm going to ask the commissioner to call this Adam. question. Uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem is, I can't speak over him, so I'm waiting for Mayor Pro Tem to finish his thought now. She has spoken to, to that person. Mm -hmm. It's an yeah, open but, but, investigation. But if it's, I, if it's I, about an individual, I don't, I'm not sure that it needs to be brought up. Then that would be correct. There's personnel matters uh, that HR is aware of, which you mentioned that. It. Talk, then, talking about it in an open investigation mm -hmm. could be problematic for the city. So I would not prefer to see the city not get into any of the specifics of any um, issue between any uh, particular employee or former employee of the city in this context. Okay. We have, we have a motion on and a second on the floor. Could I ask a commissioner to call the question? One of y'all to ask me to call the question? Is that what I do? You can call for the vote, commissioner. Uh, city manager, would you please call the vote? Commissioner Tender. This is for the workshop. This, this was for the workshop correct. for clarification, is, correct? Just for further discussion, correct? Commissioner Russell. My understanding from Mr. Albritton is this is, would be the vote for uh, to have a workshop for the grievance committee. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Commissioner Tender. Yes. Commissioner Mayor Anderson. Yes. 
Commissioner, all, um, excuse me, Commissioner Perno. Yes. Commissioner Aldridge. No. Mayor Pro Tem Russell. No. M motion passes three to two. I'm passing the gavel back to the mayor. Thank you. And before adjourning, I would just reiterate one more time that to vote for a workshop just for the purpose of the commission being able to discuss and to possibly have better understanding of our charter and our, our obligations, our jobs, what the job of the city manager is, where everybody's lane is and how everybody needs to stay in their lanes, I think the workshop could be a very productive thing. So uh, at this point, um, thank everybody for your discussion, for your candidness, for attending the meeting, and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.